tattoos as well add a little element of um of color to the league because tattoos are still in this part of the world still looked on as a little bit taboo he's had his ears pinned back so expect him to be even quicker than he was when he was playing for arsenal and liverpool he's actually got new teeth as well which okay he's got new what got new teeth <laughs> come on carry on well, he's got new teeth so aesthetically he looks better than ever uh, John Wilkinson was the best midfielder the S League has ever seen perhaps not the best midfielder that the S League has ever seen but a wholehearted midfielder all action midfielder perhaps perhaps he was probably the most complete midfielder in the fact that he could do a little bit of everything not the most creative but he could create not the most defensive but he could put a tackle in and he was responsible defensively. Loved playing, was consumed by the game, a game that gave him so much but took away an awful lot as well. Um, he had a little bit of, he had a few run-ins with coaches along the way and if you ask him who the best coach he ever played for, he would find that very difficult to answer because in his words, he never completely played for a good coach. He played for some good people but not so, not so much good genius coaches scored some important goals most notably from long range situations but he has a nagging feeling that he never really filled his full potential uh, finished his career he thinks prematurely but did it for family reasons because he didn't want to have to go and play overseas to continue his career but travelled all around the world with the game a game that he fell in love with since before he could walk a game that gave him so much but of course took quite a lot away from him as well enjoying his media career now but how long was that Nick? well he was on a roll and <laughs> <laughs> about, 15, about 15 seconds over it wasn't much but well, that's a subject I don't know a lot about so I was just paddling there for a minute um, I love it that you can talk about yourself in the third person yeah I, I know I love it that John, John can talk about that. himself in the third person yeah it's a bit like the rock right <laughs> Uh, the host nation Qatar will win the AFC Under-23 Championship. The host nation Qatar, I don't think, will win the AFC Under-23 Championship. They're one of the youngest sides in the competition. Um, they've put a lot of emphasis on, on youth over the last decade or so and have brought in a lot of South American coaches, most notably um, Chilean and Argentinian coaches, and they have stopped their coaching um, with... Um, South America with the South American influence so they like to play um, a short passing style they have some fantastic talent at senior level Mohamed Abdul Rahman who's probably my favorite player in the whole of Asia and he came up through the youth ranks and they poached him actually from Saudi Arabia where he was born and they've poached a lot of young talent from Iraq and Saudi Arabia subsequently uh, I love UAE the way that they play I just don't think they have the now defensively to win a competition and I don't think that senior level they'll be winning a competition anytime soon at least not off this continent oh there have been times where that were hard I might I could be discontent and chase the rainbow's end I might win more but lose all that is mine I could be a lot but I know I'm not I'm content just with the riches that you bring I might shoot to win and commit the sin of wanting more than I've already got. I could run away, but I'd rather stay in the warmth of your smile, lighting up my day, the one that makes me say. Because you're the best thing <laughs> that ever happened. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Is there a better song than the Style Council's You're the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me? Yeah, the, the, there's a better song, Slide Away by Oasis. I uh, think that's a better song. How's that go? Slide away, give it all you got. Mine today came in from the top. Du, du, du. <laughs> All the things you say. I wonder where you are now. Slide in, baby. Together we'll fly. I tried staying, but I don't know what you're staying to me. Now that you're mine, we'll find a way to chasing the sun. Baby, you're the one ties with me. And in the morning, you don't know what to do. We're two of a kind. Oh, I've got an audience here on the village. You'll find a way chasing the sun. 
Baby, you're the one. Please press that buzzer, please. No, we, we, did, we didn't even start the timer, son. It was all, that was awesome. <laughs> I've, got, I've got three people just stuck and stood in front of me. <laughs> Where are you? I'm just at, uh, on the corner. What's that? Oh, yeah, Hagen Duff. Oh. oh, you can see the windmill from there. Right, lovely. Yeah. Uh, okay, next up, Leicester City will qualify for the Champions League. They will qualify. Leicester City will qualify for the Champions League only, and if only, Mares and Vardy can stay fit and healthy. Just behind them, uh, Danny Drinkwater's had an outstanding season, and he fills the gaps really, really well. Space Invader, if you've ever seen one, strong in the tackle, reads again really well, but vocal is in the side, in that central midfield area as an organiser, signed and made millions and made a career out of being a talker. Danny Drinkwater, unsung hero of Leicester City. Claudio Ranieri has actually progressed, and it's difficult to progress as a manager over the age of, say, 55. But he's progressed. He trusts his players, doesn't tinker nearly as much. A lot of the fact that is because he just doesn't have the strength and depth in the squad. But what he does have is Vardy's pace up front. And when you put the ball over the top, he's onto it like a flash. Love the fact that Vardy doesn't try and complicate his game or do anything foreign to himself. And what about the scouting at Leicester? To bring Mares is Mares in, um, who was playing in the third tier of French football only three years ago. John Wilkinson versus Stephen Langdon would be a good MMA fight to watch. Oh, John Wilkinson versus Stephen Langdon would be a fantastic MMA fight to watch. If John Wilkinson could get down to the weight of Stephen Langdon, it would be a good scrap. Stephen Langdon, of course, has been in this game for a long time and has the skills on John Wilkinson. But John Wilkinson's cardio is second to none and has been a professional athlete, full-time professional athlete, since he, had, since he was 15 years of age. John Wilkinson has a high pain threshold and if he was going to get beat up by anybody it would be Stephen Langdon one of my favourite fighters not just on the continent but in the world follow Stephen Langdon um, for over a year now seen him fight live three times um, big fan of his he's a good looking boy as is John Wilkinson so that would make the fight even better the fact that John Wilkinson's got a little bit of a name in Singapore and Stephen Langdon has a massive name the fight wouldn't need much marketing but I'm sure Red Card could market it to the hilt and it would be an absolute sellout down at Marina Bay Sands. I would invite everybody I know, Stephen Langdon would invite everybody he knows, it will be packed to the rafters, and then I'll take his head off. I think you're calling him out there, John. Well, kind of. I love the guy. I think he's a great fighter. Like I said, I've followed, his, I've followed him, what, to KL, to Manila. I've seen him fight on three occasions now. I'm a big fan, big fan of his style as well. Wow. Good call. Right, we should make that happen. I'm meeting him I next like Thursday. I'll like meet get him next. I'm going to be the Don King of the Red Card Sports Radio World. Well, you've got the you've got the grey hair for it now, son, <laughs> haven't you? You just spiked that up. I got the fro as well. If it, yeah, you've got the fro. You have got the fro, but you've lost a little bit of weight. I think you're a bit more streamlined. If you're going to be a promoter, you've got to be big and heavy. <laughs> uh, you've got uh, just well, you've got just one more. You've had nine topics. It goes quite quick, doesn't it? It does go quite quick. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Uh, okay, you actually got uh, sorry three more topics. Don't go that quick; goes very slow. Um, Richard Lenton is the best sports presenter in Asia. <laughs> you pass. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew you were going to throw one in like this. No, it's all right. Just joking. <laughs> oh, okay, well, who's your top three then? Are you said what a sports presenter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not in, not in, not in any order, but. From three down to one. Okay. Uh, Stephen Dawson, I'd go for an all-round sports presenter. Good knowledge. Jack of all trades. Utility sports presenter. I'd go for Steve, Tr Steve <laughs> Dawson. Box to box. Box to box. box, to box presenter. Plays in a variety of positions presenter. <laughs> um, I'd go for Colette Wong for her intensity. Oh, good call. Yeah, I'd go for Colette Wong. And the fact that she's probably got most muscular calves in the industry. And they look great on camera, and she has a tremendous knowledge again on a variety of sports. So I spoke to Colette during the week. Yeah, I said to her, "Come on the show because she's you know everyone's got a sports story to tell, right?" Oh, and she said, yeah, "Look, no. I'm petrified about coming on to radio." Well, that's mm. a bit weird. She goes, "But why don't you invite Shake, PJ, Sharky, and me, and we'll have a um, a football crazy reunion?" Oh, that is a great idea. A what great a wonderful idea. idea! Yeah. Hey, so are you going to make that happen? Well, I can't afford PJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And the thing is, people don't realise that about PJ. He doesn't do anything for free. Nothing for free. PJ, people need to know that about PJ. Richest man in Singapore. Yeah, Richest they need man. to know that. And you and I have never had a... He's never even bought us a drink. No, the only time he buys us a drink is when we steal his credit card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it is a heavy platinum card, though. One of the wealthiest men. Yeah. One of the wealthiest men I know. Yeah. Yeah. But there you go. So, yeah, I would go for Dawson. I would go for Colette Wong. And it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up between Paula, because her voice is just, oh. it's just made for being on Brilliant, TV and on radio. It's yeah. incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's like, oh, it's tough. As just pure football sports presenter, it's a toss-up between you and Richard. No, Lenton. no, I don't want. I don't. Don't include me. It's obvious where I stand. I've got it now. I've got it. It's a, obvious I've, where I am. I've That's obvious. To. I'm talking well, about the next best three. <laughs> well, the thing, yeah, but the thing is, Lenton only does sports. You're really good at lifestyle as well. Oh yeah, have so, you checked out? Uh, have you seen me on Lifestyle TV with my, yeah. me and my me and my spe- lounges and penders? There you go, spectacular <laughs> lounges of the world. Have you seen that series? That you're on yeah, of course, I you haven't. <laughs> Brilliant. Hey, can I ask? Is it true you got Andy Lau on your show it's coming on today? No, Andy Lau, the Hong Kong actor you've got on your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's it's from that- Hong Kong and he's an actor, but it's it's Dom Dom Lau. Oh, Never oh, that Dom, Dominic Lau. Well, that's um, that's that's good as well. That's good as well. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. He's actually going to make it on time and turn up. Well, he's not because he's sat with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I do love red card sports yeah, radio. Right, last one. Ten out of ten. It's a, the ten out of ten that's last, especially the last ten minutes. Lasted 20 with John. Very love okay. it. Um, right, come on. I want a quick preview for Manchester United against Liverpool. I think if um, LVG wins this and they come out on top, I think the Dutchman will be at Old Trafford for quite a long time. If, if Louis van Gaal manages to get one over um, on Liverpool, I think that he would, I would give him a little bit of breathing space. I'm, I'm certainly not with you in the fact that I think he'll be at Manchester United for a long time. I don't think that he has um, the right personality. I don't think he has the right game plan. I think he's changed his game plan over a period of a period of months now. I'm not really sure what he brings to Manchester United other than a stable black back line. I worry about Manchester United because even when they try and play progressive, free-flowing, um, forward-thinking football like they did last Tuesday against um, Newcastle when it was 3-3, probably the game of the Premier League season so far, they could not keep a clean sheet. And if you can't find that balance, you're going to find uh, it tough going in the Premier League. And that's the problem Liverpool have at the moment. They cannot find a, the correct balance when Firmino and Coutinho play up front. It's expressive, it's exciting. And when they can get Benteke firing on all cylinders and then when they play to his strength and get the ball into the box, they will always score goals defensively all over the, all over the, the show at the moment. And Lovren's not going to be back for this game. So Liverpool, mark my words, will concede in this game at Anfield. And Manchester United do have a better record against Liverpool in the last seven games. What game are you covering tonight, John? I'm covering Chelsea versus Everton. Yeah, I can get I can get fairly excited about that. Well, you get excited for the fact that Lukaku hasn't had a barnstorming standout game against any of the big teams just yet. I think he's due. And if you've not put Lukaku into your fantasy eleven, go and put him into your fantasy eleven now because I think he'll have a standout game. Um, okay, town ten with uh, former Singapore international John Wilkinson. He's live from the Hagen Dazs in Holland Village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of want you to tr- do a dare, John. Oh, Penders now. No, you know what I mean. Like you're on the phone. Like I don't know. Go up to nah, someone. Um, well, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing. It. I'll do a truth, but I won't do a dare. Oh, well, I mean, I like, go up to someone and ask them if they've heard of me and see how excited they go. They get. Do you want me to? You want me to go up to somebody and ask if they've heard of Andy Pender? Yeah. And I bet so you, it like, has to be a bloke between twenty and forty. Yep. And we'll have a bet whether they've heard of me or not. Well, I can do it quickly now. Do you want me to do it quickly now? All right, five bucks. Go. Okay, I'm coming up now. I'll put him on the phone. I say, excuse me. Hi. Just a quick one. I'm on the radio at the moment. Have you heard of a guy called Andy Pender? Andy Pender. Yeah. Heard of a guy called Andy. Pender. No, I don't, we don't, we don't really know. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. See, Andy, they've not heard of you. 
Okay, right. Now, just to get my five bucks back, go up to the next guy that's 20 to 40 and ask him if they've heard of John Wilkinson. <laughs> okay, well, let me let me ask this guy quickly. He's with his girlfriend. I'm going to interrupt. Excuse me, sorry. I'm just on the radio now. Can I ask you one question? Have you heard of um, someone called Johnny Wilkinson? Jo- yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Fine. Say yes or no. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yep. So there, they've heard of, they've heard of me. <laughs> so there you go. You said Johnny Wilkinson. He's the, the most famous rugby player ever. Well, he clearly knew, and he meant he meant me, not um, <laughs> not the rugby player. I mean, surely he's looking straight at me. <laughs> Uh, John, if you're in the studio, so much to talk about, including your time at Exeter with the great Alan Ball. I'd love to have spoken about that. I'd love to have talk, spoken about your India trip, the time at Woodlands, the characters you played with, like Grabovac and Park Tae Wan and Tersek Chaiman. I'd like to have spoken about your time at SAF with Richard Bock, the four championships back to back to back to back that you won because you were there for them all. I want you to talk about your AFC Champions League encounters, uh, your first point that the, the, the club had earned on the uh, regional stage. I wanted to to talk yeah. about what next for you as well. I wanted to talk about your international experience, your, your goal assist for on your debut against North Korea. I want to talk about your four goals that you scored against the UAE, against Palestine, against Uzbekistan. I want to talk about some of the players you played with, Iskander, Kasmir, Duris, Sonny, Isak, Farudin, Harin, um, Amri, Noalem Shah, <laughs> Ridwan Mohamed, Precious, Baraki, CGI, Dan Bennett, Fazrul Nawaz, Lionel Lewis, Raddy as manager. You want me to talk about all that? I want to talk about all that, Andy. I want you to talk about all of that, John. In fact, I'll narrow it down because, because right, um, I want to talk about your goal against Palestine in the World Cup 2010 qualifiers, please. Um, that was, oh, yeah. well, just getting into the stadium was really tough. That was really tough just getting into the stadium. And there was a burnt out, just a shell of a tank outside the stadium. So as we got out, as we got off the coach, and of course everyone's, serious and um you know just trying to just trying to focus once you get towards the stadium you just want to focus on the game and 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 get done what you need to get done because we've been i think we over prepared for this game we were in we were in west asia for far too long and we you know we over prepared we just wanted to get home but as soon as we got to the stadium there was a burnt out shell of a tank so i jumped off the bus took my headphones off ran over to the the tank and made sure that raddy and sasha uh, Sasha, the fitness coach, wasn't watching, and I asked Ridwan Muhammad to take a picture. As soon as as soon as I started climbing onto the the shell of the tank, Ridwan said, "Hey, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny," and he was making hand signals to, for me to get off the get off the tank. I said, "What? Well, what's the problem? Just take the picture, lah. Hurry up, chapat, chapat, take the picture." And then three armed guys in full camo gear, with with helmets on and everything, just sprinted, not jogged over, sprinted over to me grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and ragdolled me to the floor. So as I went to the floor, I had my, my Singapore tracksuit on, my Singapore national team tracksuit on, and I was really kind of disconsolate, actually, as I was walking into the stadium. I got really roughed up. I had dust all over me. Ridwan was absolutely in hysterics, laughing, in Malay, telling all the boys in the dressing room that I'd nearly got killed. And, uh, yeah, I was a little bit jaded. It took me about 20 minutes to get into the game. And I can't remember what minute it was that we that I actually scored, but um, the ball went up to Kyra Lamry, and I just thought, oh, sod it, and I just tried to get as close to Kyra Lamry as, as possible as the ball was about to drop on his head, and he didn't, didn't win many in the air, Amri, because he's a bit of a diminutive figure, he's only about five foot seven, but he managed to get something on it and just flicked it onto me, and I went through a one-on-one situation and, uh, and stuck it in the corner. Uh, before and you was, stuck it in the corner, though, John... Before you did yeah. that, yeah. you did your one-on-one with the goalkeeper. You did the most outrageous step over I've ever seen. <laughs> oh right! <laughs> you know what? I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking of another goal. <laughs> oh, were you? Which goal? Yeah. Which goal were you thinking of? I was thinking of the one in uh, in Beirut against Lebanon, which could have been a friendly. Actually, I think that's a friendly match. So you scored yeah, five in total. One. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. It all matches together. I've had a lot of hits to the head, Andy. See. But uh, yeah, oh, I okay. So I got confused about. there. But remember, do you remember the big step over? Did, yeah, did the boys rip into you now. about that afterwards? Yeah, I, I, so I, I asked my run to. Yeah, I really dramatised my my run to stay on side, and I went through one on one. 
And that was a difficult game because we had to create our own atmosphere. There was nobody in the, in the stadium. And it was a massive stadium as well. It was a good pitch. And, um, yeah, I didn't really know what I was going to do in the one-on-one situation. So you just kind of you just let your training or what you used to do on the street as a kid take over. And that's what the step over was, really. Loved it. And, uh, yeah, put him on his ass and, and lobbed it over him. Yeah, it's very, it's a super little finish. And just finally, Junks, I know you're busy. Are you with the kids now? Are you just? No, I'm I'm, I'm on my own. Oh, just I'm on my own. Uh, just by it on your own. I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been that sort of week, is it? A little bit of ice cream to cheer you up before you go this into work. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is just me. This is my time. It doesn't last long. Oh, excellent. Um, I want to talk about the three-seven home defeat by Uzbekistan. Oh, what a game that was, son. Well. D- that cuts deep that game that really does because for the first 20 minutes we were we were the better team you know and taking taking the lead twice um they were really good that's that's probably the best uzbekistani uzbekistani side that they've had oh how good was jeparov oh, oh fantastic but that whole group of players i mean a similar age group and they they were kept together in the youth teams and they came up through. I think there was about at that point there was three, maybe four players that were playing in the Russian, in the Russian league. Um, a couple playing for Dynamo Moscow, and I mean they're really, really good side. But we were in, um, we were in really good nick as well. And we, we honestly, we it's honestly right. thought we could beat anybody yeah. at that point. We honestly thought we could beat anybody. Um, even if we were playing against Australia, we were, we, we were certainly sure that we could, we could nick something from them. We're in great shape. Fitness levels were, were through the roof, and um, it was a period where certain players had just had just peaked. Ridwan Muhammad had just picked, uh, just peaked, and he was he's one of the quickest players I've ever played with. Um, he's an absolute streak of bacon, but he was he was so so quick, and he peaked for about an eighteen month period. After eighteen months, he was useless. But that eighteen month period, you could just stick it into space, and you get on the end of it. Kyrill Amri was. Was, was full of guard twisting and, turn, and twisting and turning and Shao Lishak could come off the bench or just give him the ball in tight situations and he calmed things down. So it was a really disappointing game. Um, it, was a, it was just a couple of mistakes. I think there was a major one from, from Dan oh, at the back. A major one from Lionel. Lionel Lewis as well, he yeah. Just, which, from the corner, it's just, he's just, just gone in. You know, it, it, was, it, was just silly mista- it was just silly mistakes and... I, I, and I you hit the, the woodwork a couple of times. Yeah, Chu Lee hit the woodwork just yeah. before I, I finished it off for for our goal. Good commentary on that, by the way. So you had uh, Des Corkill commentating. I couldn't work out who the um, co-commentator Sass- could have been. Sassy, didn't it? Sassy no, it wasn't. No? It was. Uh, it was. It was more of a chassis Kuma. It was more of, more of that sort of. But before his time, I don't know who it would be. Oh, so not not sassy, but more chassis. I mean, that's yeah, culturally culturally very different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, uh, more Roshan but not Roshan before <laughs> right. t- you know that's yeah. Um, but, yeah. but, he, but the co-commentator's gone and John Wilkinson will probably know that this is one of the easiest international goals that he will score <laughs> right right well it, it wasn't actually that one wasn't it, it probably looked like it just a bit of a tapping but it wasn't because the ball was kind of bouncing and bobbling up and a little bit too much time to think about it and if you look at and if you look at that goal again, I've there's only that. one place I could put that, right in the corner, because the goalkeeper was scrambling. Well, and let's um, find out who the cocom was, and let's get some retribution. In fact, let's let's do this. Let's take him down to a field, right? Yeah. Let's ping the ball at him in the very in exactly the same situation, and see if he can finish it off. It wasn't. It certainly wasn't um, the legend Brian Richmond, though, was it? No, he's a cocom man. Oh, okay. Who was it then? I don't know. It's, oh, it's it could have been. <laughs> could it be Raj Kumar? I think it was Raj Kumar. You know. Oh yeah, I think it was. Now that would make it even funnier, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. to get Raj Kumar in some football boots <laughs> down, down the park. Get him doing that. That would be funny. Yeah, yeah let's do that, Andy. Funny. We'll video that. Raj will be up for a bit of that, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Done. Uh, John, thanks for joining us today. Oh, is that it? No, I mean, d- dead set though. Like we've got another fifteen minutes to fill here, but you know, I'm just worried for the the worried for the listeners really because um, you know audio, <laughs> audio quality and that sort of thing. I know, I know. I apologise to everybody, but I'm gonna. I tell you I'm what, just before you go, just before you go, because yeah. you have worked with 
I th- one of the icons of the game. Okay. Okay. Uh, a World Cup winner. Um, uh, I don't, just uh, Alan Ball. Let's talk Alan Ball. Alan Ball. Yeah. Because the great Alan Ball. You were at Exeter when he yeah. took over, and that poor Exeter side went administration dropping down a few leagues. It was a tough few years, and yep. indeed he left for Southampton and left you in the, the lurch even more. But you must have an Alan Ball story. Well, yeah, but that's 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 the thing. I was a schoolboy, so Alan Ball was. He loved the youth. He loved to bring young players up through, um, and he that was when he brought Buster Phillips, Martin Buster Phillips. He brought up through the youth ranks um, who's a similar player to myself but two years older brought him into Exeter City and then when Alan Ball ended up moving to Southampton then he moved to moved to Man City didn't he I and he, he, went, he bought he went to Southampton went to Southampton did he move to Man City as well after yeah that? after that he would yeah. yeah and then he took then he bought he made Man City by Martin Buster Phillips to help get Exeter City out of the financial strife that they're in now if Martin Phillips was a really good player but was he was he worth a couple of million record signing that Man City paid for him? I'm not so sure, but he did he did a great service to Exeter. If it wasn't for that money, Exeter might not still be around today. So right. first and foremost, you've got to thank the great Ginger Nugget for that. Um, as a coach, he was just probably not the most tactically astute, but just as a motivator, incredible. He had this the highest, squeakiest voice. He speaks very highly. Of, he used to speak very highly of you, John. <laughs> Who, Alan Ball? Yeah. <laughs> he used to absolutely lambast he used to cane me uh, I remember giving the ball away and I used to play on the right wing it was similar I guess similar to the, the position that he used to play um, and I remember giving the ball away once and he took his flat cap off and he threw it on the floor and he jumped on it for about two minutes and he was saying Johnny Wilkinson you're an absolute nightmare. And I was 14 years old. He was jumping up and down on his hat. And he was saying, you're an absolute nightmare. The problem is with you, Johnny. You'll never make a player as long as you've got a hole in your ass. And then I was, I, was, I was close to just bursting into tears. I got myself together. And had a few more touches. 15 minutes later, I gave the ball, the ball away again. And he took his hat off. And jumped on it again. He said, "The problem with you, Johnny, is you got no arsehole." <laughs> and I just after that game, I didn't, I didn't want to play. I, after that game, I got in the car with my dad, and I didn't want to play. And he was one of my dad's heroes. So my dad turned around, stopped the car on the side of the road, on the side of the main road, and he turned around. And he said, "He's only telling you all this because he cares about you, and he wants you to make it." Did you notice the, some of the other players he didn't even talk to? He didn't even know their name, but he knew your name. And I went home with my chest puffed out after that, thinking that, oh my goodness, Alan Ball, World Cup winner, knows who I am. And him just knowing who I was and shouting at me, um, that was it for me then. I thought, I, I thought from that moment that I was going to be a professional footballer. You put your own destiny right in your own hands. It, it just became a reality I'm a brilliant yeah yeah very nice lovely story lovely way to finish this um, little interview John well lovely man lovely man who do, Alan Ball or me for having you on my show both of you you're both lovely men <laughs> you're both hey John, motivated en- enjoy yeah. the cookies and cream I'd go cone rather than tub if I were you before you start tonight who, who are you hosting with tonight on Fox Sports I am hosting with the one and only Chevy Singh. Oh, the chef's now. He's been on the show, but good for him too. Actually, he actually turned up uh, into the studio for the show. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if that was a good thing because uh, he told me that you um, you slaughtered him. Slaughtered him. You were giving him the. No, I was doing some... the, the, Sp- the Spanish Inquisition was uh, was on the show asking him about his time at Blackburn. Um, well, John, I was just asking him the questions that everybody wanted to ask him which is what you do, which is what happens at Red Card Sports Radio, because it's the best. <laughs> uh, John Wilkinson, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Love you guys. Take care. Have a good show. Uh, John Wilkinson, former Singapore international and Hagen das bound. Um, good Alan Ball story, that, Nick. Yeah, it was. I mean, I wish I had the kind of legend coaching me Yeah. if I ever actually started playing football. Well... 
Yeah, I was yesterday. I was watching Geylang International, Geylang Bole, by the way. I don't know if you saw my picture on Facebook with the Geylang International stars. Yeah, you were seated on the bench or something, right? Why not, man? <laughs> Look, I've got privileges, right? Everyone's like giving me the the high press. Hey, Geylang Bole. And uh, I managed to speak to Hazrin, and we'll hear from him a little bit later on. I managed to speak to some of the players, and they, they looked really good as well. But when I was watching the game, I sat right at the back, and I was lucky enough to be seated next to Adi Iskander, who's the te technical director. And as we sat there, because the Home United um, game was called off, um, Fandi Ahmad comes along. <laughs> now, I could give you some really good insight exclusives into what they were talking about, but I can't speak Bahasa. <laughs> Dead set. They were having the best conversation ever. And I, I had no idea. Maybe it's something you should pick up. I think it, I think I could reveal a lot more exclusives if I do that. Uh, plenty of football coming on Red Card Sports Radio a little bit later on. That's because there's plenty of Premier League coverage on the way. The early game is Tottenham against Sunderland. That's an 8.45pm kickoff. And then the 11 o'clock, Chelsea against Everton, Bournemouth against Norwich, Newcastle West Ham, Manchester City against Crystal Palace. The late game is Aston Villa against Leicester City. On Sunday, uh, the Liverpool-Manchester United game is, is on at 5 past 10. That's annoying, isn't it? Five past ten. Uh, Stoke against Arsenal, therefore, is on that stupid time as well. And then Monday, whoever's picked this, Mon well, Swansea against Watford. Monday night football. Thank God that's on at four o'clock in the morning, whatever time it is. Uh, plenty of Premier League action on Red Card Sports Radio. Enter a new generation of sports. Red Card Sports Radio. Still to come on Barclays Premier League Live. Tottenham Hotspur versus Sunderland from White Hart Lane. Has Tottenham come forward and Tottenham score the equalising goal through Deli Alley, who is the Spurs hero again. And he finishes it here and he plays it across and Jermaine Defoe completes his hat-trick. I think that they all are on the top, on the top ten, have the possibility to, to win the, the league. I think it's very open, you can guess. In football and it's a lot of game ahead still for play and you know what can happen Chelsea versus Everton from Stamford Bridge Blues are making something count here decent ball across and there's the opening goal of the game from Cesar Aspilicueta Barclays into the area Barclays squares the crowd oh they've done it Everton have done it it's Dale Lafayette going into the second half of the campaign we can be consistent in our results which you can imagine that all the good work that you do playing well gets uh, gets recognised and it gives you a real belief and a sense of, of confidence going into, into the next game. So, important that we, we maintain the levels and, and we start really brightly against this Chelsea side. Aston Villa versus Leicester City from Villa Park. Here's the corner again from the left-hand side from Lescott with a header and it's been spilt and it's an opening goal for Aston Villa. Taken by Fuchs, it's an out swinger, it's a solid header into the net! Robert Hood for Leicester City! Maybe sooner or later Leicester slowed down but normal but since now it's fantastic and our fans are dreaming okay they must continue to dream we must continue to work hard that is a good uh, balance and then tomorrow liverpool versus manchester united from anfield in towards benteke it's gonna come down yes! Yes! It's Joe Allen! The substitute has done it! Memphis here for United. Shot block, Rooney! Way Rooney is back with a hellacious bang from the edge of the area. It's important for the table. We are close together, so um, both teams uh, need the points to, to, to stay close with uh, the top teams in, 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 the, in the table. And for this, it's important, but it's Man United. So. That's how I understand derbies. I love derbies. Followed by Stoke City versus Arsenal from the Britannia Stadium. By Arnautovic, great cross from Arnautovic. And sliding in at the back post to finish is Jonathan Walters, who makes it three goals in four games. Turns it back into Campbell. Campbell tries to slip it through. Will it fall for Arsenal? It will! Olivier Giroud! They uh, can create, they can play, but it's a good challenge for us as well because they have to uh, maintain our record and uh, we can show that we have uh, made big step forward and uh, can beat them and uh, it's an opportunity of course we want to take. That's all still to come on Barclays Premier League Live from Talk Sport. You're with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio. 
Welcome back, everyone. It's the Andy Penner Show on Red Card Sports Radio. We're streaming live on YouTube on uh, Red Card Sports Radio on Star Hub Channel 225. Intern Pratap. Yeah, we are streaming, right? Oh, so sackable with that. Anyway, let's move on. Because we have a wicked show for you. On the way, the multi-talented Dominic Lau is here. Um, he's also a good friend of mine as well, so I'm going to strip away the layers. Not that he's wearing, I'm talking metaphorically. And get inside the man, again, metaphorically. A Spanish expert Antonio Grodinach tells us the inside deal with Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid being handed those transfer bans. Uh, we hear from Singapore's top top coaches, Jörg Steinbrunner's on the show, uh, Kay Balagumaran. Am I saying that right? Uh, yes, that's right. Balagumaran. Yes. Bala. Yeah. Is on the show. Galang International coach, Galang Bolle. Um, Hazrin Jailing is also on the show. Also, Football Manager 2016 tips. Everyone's got their own side of the story to tell on how to take your favourite team or least favourite team to championship success. Uh, BPR predictions on the way, plus a chance for you to win a brand new uh, Samsung mobile phone, courtesy of our friend Samsung Sportsflow. How good is that? John Wilkinson has already been on the show. Uh, he believes that uh, Manchester United have got a good chance against Liverpool this coming weekend. Let's hear from Warren Ashurst. Well, arguably the biggest rivalry in the Premier League is reignited again on Sunday as Liverpool and Manchester United prepare to do battle at Anfield. The clubs are just 35 miles apart and remain the two most successful teams in English football, but both go into this latest clash under serious pressure. Jurgen Klopp and Louis van Gaal are both seeking a top four spot this term in Champions League football next season, but the two sides are currently on the peripheral. Friday saw Klopp reach 100 days in charge at Anfield and he currently has a 48% win ratio and has already been in charge of a staggering 21 games during that period. The German though is now starting to feel comfortable with his surroundings. Now after this time I can say we really settled in, it's maybe not too important for you but for us um, and we had, uh, we know much more about the club, um, we had a good time until now but yeah. Uh, in football, uh, most important things are the results. We know this, and um, but we are, we're going for it. So that's I think what everybody can see, and we try to improve as quick as possible. Sometimes you have to make a step back to that you can do the next step in the other in, in the right direction. So that's what we did. Until now, I'm I'm fine. Well, Liverpool defender Dejan Lovren will not be fit to return against United, and Daniel Sturridge remains absent. The Croatia international Lovren is still recovering from a hamstring injury sustained at Stoke earlier this month, while none of the other players on the lengthy Anfield injury list are close to fitness. Striker Sturridge, meanwhile, who's been out since the start of December with a similar problem, is still not yet ready to make his comeback. Well, meanwhile, United boss Louis van Gaal will seek a response from his team after admitting he was annoyed that the side threw away two points in Tuesday's 3-3 draw at Newcastle. Having taken charge of three games against Liverpool during his time at Old Trafford, the Dutchman is well aware of the tension and atmosphere in this game and he wants his players to remain composed. We uh, need to be uh, aggressive but uh, also under control uh, that kind of matches and that's always difficult because the passion to play this, this kind of games is very high. I think everybody is ready to play this game but you have to do it at the right time, in a uh, different schedule. I think uh, we have to play uh, five past two. Also new, I think, and uh, we have to show it at that time, in that 90 minutes or 95 minutes, and uh, with that resistance of, of Liverpool. Well, Bastian Schweinsteiger is expected to miss Sunday's game at Anfield as he needs more time to recover from a leg injury. Defender Phil Jones could be back in action soon, but Sunday's game will come too soon for him, while Van Gaal will again be without midfielder Michael Carrick. Although returning loney Adnan Janazai comes into contention, he may well get a place on the bench. Well, the recent head-to-head -head stats favour Van Gaal's men, with United winning the last three meetings between the sides, including a 3-1 victory at Old Trafford in September. Thanks very much to Warren Ashurst. Looking forward to this game, so much so that they've brought down Robbie Fowler and Jason McAteer into town. We've tried to get hold of them, but they're so busy, man. Uh, we're trying to do an interview with them next week for you. Let's hear from both of the managers. We'll start off with Louis van Gaal. He wants the players to keep their cool ahead of this big derby game. You can see it 
Also uh, at the faces of the players. Uh, last year, for example, Gerard is coming in and he is sending out uh, within uh, 30 seconds. That's not happening so much. So uh, we uh, need to be uh, aggressive, but uh, also under control. Uh, that kind of matches, and that's always difficult. Because the passion to play this, this kind of games is very high. Next up, let's hear from Liverpool manager uh, Jurgen Klopp. Have you, have you, Nick, have you been... Um, I thought, what was he doing against Arsenal, Jurgen Klopp? Which part? Just, just the running around <laughs> bit and the nonsense. He's bit. very excitable, isn't he? A bit like a little kid on the touchline. Just, and Arsene Wenger's just class, full of class. Yeah, I read that he said, I had to ask him to come down yeah. or he's going to get sent to the stands. Don't get it. Anyway, let's hear from Jurgen Klopp because he is a very excitable man. He's very excited about the derby game against Manchester United. I think a game against Man United should, it's for sure a little bit like um, Dortmund Schalke. So you have to, you can play the whole season like you want, but in these games you have to be prepared. You have to be there. You have to show your best. And um, yeah, obviously it is, it, it's important for the table. We are close together. So, um, both teams uh, need the points to, to to stay close with uh, the top teams in in, in, the, in the table and for this it's important but it's Man United so that's how I understand derbies I love derbies to be honest it's it's a salt in the soup yeah so, and um, uh, yeah best matches to to perform it's got a lovely turn of phrase isn't he the salt in the soup. Yeah. It's really nice. I like way, it. Where do you get it from? I think. Is, it, is it something he made up? Or? It, it sounds to me like it's, a, like it's a German saying. Yeah. And that he's uh, made it English. The salt in the soup. The sugar in your tea. Well, not everyone drinks tea yeah. sugar. It's true. Well, but you always has, need salt in your soup. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Uh, some big games tonight in the Premier League. Uh, the early kickoff is Tottenham against uh, Sunderland. And then we move into the 11 o'clock games. Bournemouth against Norwich. Manchester City against Crystal Palace. Newcastle against West Ham. Southampton taking on West Brom. One of the more intriguing games is Chelsea against Everton. Let's get a preview from Bobby Jackson. Chelsea will be looking to maintain their unbeaten run on Saturday when they face Roberto Mata this Everton side at Stamford Bridge. The reigning Premier League champions have yet to lose a match since Jose Mourinho was sacked in December following a 2 1 defeat to Leicester City. Gus Hiddink's approach has certainly improved the club's fortunes, but they still sit 14th in the Premier League table. The Blues have not tested defeat for six games, but they were left disappointed when they allowed West Brom and Jardim to come back from behind on two occasions during Wednesday's 2 2 draw. Although their recent run of results has lifted spirits among some of their fans, Hiddink insists they cannot afford to get carried away and could yet be dragged back into relegation fight if Everton get a result this weekend. Of course, we all like to, to look forward and, 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 and on top of the table, but also don't be, don't be uh, unrealistic and you're six point off uh, and you're under the line of relegation. We were down when we started, we were one point off uh, of the relegation line and now we have a little bit more of, uh, of a breathe. But anyhow, uh, we have two difficult games coming up. Everton was have a, a very good away record as well in the last 10 games. I don't know by heart, but I think 9 out of 10 they, they made a result. And then Arsenal, which means two very difficult games. And if you don't gather their points, you don't know what the others do. Premier League can, uh, can surprise you. The Dutchman will once again be unable to call upon midfielder Eden Hazard, who is still struggling to overcome a groin injury. Striker Rodemel Falcao is still on the sidelines due to a thigh issue, but Hiddink still has plenty of options in attack. Winger Pedro may be dropped after a poor spell against the Baggies, with Kennedy tipped for a rare start after limited chances so far. Meanwhile, Everton come into the game on the back of a 0-0 draw against Manchester City, which saw them extend their unbeaten run to four matches. The Toffees have proven their class against Tottenham and the Citizens, but their patchy form has seen them remain 11th in the table. Martinez's men sit just four points in front of Chelsea ahead of kick-off, but the Spaniard is aware of the threat the West London outfit will pose. I think Chelsea are uh, a team full of, of, of winning footballers. Remember that they won the, the Premier League last season and uh, that's not long ago, so the quality is there. There are players that 
in one second they can produce something magic and that demands a, a level of concentration, a level of, of, of focus, very, very important. But in the same way, we want to be ourselves. We want to go to Stamford Bridge and be able to, to, to perform in the way that we've been doing away from home this season. It was a good point against Manchester City, but you want to win football games and you need to make that point good with the other next result. And that's that's uh, a good performance at Stamford Bridge, but we we'll respect immensely this team and we we'll respect immensely the quality that Chelsea Chelsea have. Everton picked up no fresh injuries in the draw with City, but right back Seamus Coleman and midfielder James McCarthy remain out. For Manchester United star Tom Cleverley is rated as a 50 50 chance for the game, but forward Stephen Naismith will not be risked. The former Rangers star scored a hat trick the last time these two met in a 3 1 win for Everton in September, but an ankle injury and imminent exit from Goodison Park means he will not feature on Saturday. Uh, thank you very much to Bobby Jackson there. Let's um, hear from uh, one of the managers. We've already heard from uh, Martinez. Let's hear from Gus Hiddink. He's very wary of Everton's decent away showing. We were down when we started. We were one point off uh, of the relegation line. And now we have a little bit more of, uh, of a breeze. But anyhow, uh, we have two difficult games coming up. Everton, which has uh, which have a very good away record as well in the last 10 games. I don't know by heart, but I think 9 out of 10 they, they made a result. And then Arsenal, which means two very difficult games. And if you don't gather their points, you don't know what the others do. Premier League can, uh, can surprise you. Let's hear from uh, a few more of the ra random managers that I would like to hear from. <laughs> That's quite a good game. Um, first up, um, because Claudio Ranieri, right? I think he's had a cold this week, Nick. I think he's, so he sounds extra cute, <laughs> right? Well, on top of how cute he already sounds. It, this is it. <laughs> now, he said to the waiting press corps that he's very keen to keep Leicester's running win on the run. I think uh, slowly, slowly, maybe they believe something special they must do. It's not easy, of course, but it's important to try. To try, and uh, sometimes you are a little lucky to help you. Uh, Tottenham, the first 15-20 uh, minutes was um, amazing. Shoot a goal and Kasper made a very good save. But our strength was to keep going, to maintain our shape and to be concentrated and after we start to play. Super cute. So squeaky. So squeaky. Yeah. And, yeah, very good. Uh, finally, Southampton in action against West Brom. Let's hear from um, Southampton manager Ronald Koeman as he hopes to build upon that midweek win. It's all about uh, winning, winning, but, but I wasn't uh, unhappy uh, about the performances of the team. I think still in, in most of uh, the games that we lost, uh, we play our level, but uh, maybe it was uh, offensive-wise not not clinical enough, and and maybe a little bit unlucky at, at the time. And uh, but okay, uh, the win against Watford was an important one in a difficult situation, and now we like to continue. Big games coming up then on Red Card Sports Radio. Thanks for your company tonight. On the way, the multi-talented Dominic Lau is here. We'll also be talking Football Manager 2016. We'll hear from the top coaches in the S League as well, including Jörg Steinbrunner, uh, Hasri um, Jalini, as well as Bala from Haugang United, asking them if they can get themselves off the bottom of the table. No silverware, we don't care. Does that change this season? If you have been to see an S League game, we'd love to get your feedback. SD friendly game that is because I have been down to watch my team Gay Lang International beat um, Joao Fra I can't even, even pronounce their name John Frau Pongo <clears throat> John Frau Pongo yeah who are friends with us on Facebook by the way and hi um, so yeah if you've been down let us know uh, especially if you went down to that Tampanese game 1200 people there right or 2000 or 500 depending on who you who you believe but do you know how many there were down at Gay Lang last night I don't know but I'm going to take a guess I say what two three hundred no no? About 10. ten. Okay. And they were family members of John <laughs> yeah. FC. That wasn't the best. So, Premier League action coming your way on Red Card Sports Radio. It's a red card. And he should get two red cards. That's got the red card out. Red Card Sports Radio, the best sports station in Asia. Tomorrow. 
on Barclays Premier League Live. Liverpool versus Manchester United from Anfield. In towards Benteke, it's going to come down for yeah! Liverpool! The level. It's Joe Allen! The substitute has done it! Jurgen Klopp runs down the touchline, Jose Mourinho-like! If I watch football, I like to be entertained. It's not always possible. <laughs> and sometimes I need some other reasons to watch football, but... I think it's one of the most important things in football because we only all, you are only here because you're interested in why you're interested in because it's a perfect game in my opinion. It's Memphis here for United, shot block, Rooney! Way Rooney is back with a hellacious bang from the edge of the area. We uh, need to be uh, aggressive but uh, also under control. That kind of matches and that's always difficult because the passion to play this, this kind of games is very high. Followed by Stoke City versus Arsenal from the Britannia Stadium. One by Arnautovic, great cross from Arnautovic! And sliding in at the back post to finish is Jonathan Walters, who makes it three goals in four games. Uh, we've got a good record against them, certainly here. When Arsenal comes to town, um, the crowd get behind us, the, uh, the circumstances of the game are, are always uh, exciting, so I'm looking forward to a really, really impressive game. Campbell tries to slip it through. Will it fall for Arsenal? It will! Olivier Giroud! And for the first time tonight, the Gunners lead at Anfield in what is turning into an absolute classic. They uh, can create, they can play. But it's a good challenge for us as well, because they have to uh, maintain our record and uh, we can show that we have uh, made big step forward and uh, can beat them. And uh, it's an opportunity, of course, we want to take. And then, Monday, Swansea City versus Watford from the Liberty Stadium. Takes on Casamol, beats him, brilliant goal! Andre Ayew danced into the penalty area and then sent the ball sizzling across the goalkeeper and into the I think performance is certainly, I would say, have improved. I think the one big thing we can't control at the moment is, is, is fortune, that uh, every sort of little bit of luck and you know everything seems to be going against us at the moment. I think that um, probably last Wednesday was a classic example of that. And Watson drives it in, near post, it's in! Watford take the lead! And Ben Watson's corner has caught out England, Joe Hart! Incredible in five months, in six months, it's the first time we have this feeling, of course, we will never, we will never for the future. We know how is the level of the exposition in the Premier League if we don't have the, our, we do not find our level. That's all still to come on Barclays Premier League Live from Talk Sport. You're with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio. Radio, how are you doing? We're streaming live on YouTube, on RedCardSportsRadio.com, we're on Star Channel 225. Where else? Somewhere else. On the app, Red Card Live app. How could I forget? Uh, plenty coming your way, including the multi-talented Dom Lau. He's in the house. We'll also be talking Football Manager 2016. We'll give you the best tips ever. We've got the hardest ever Star Wars quiz on the way. Movie quiz is on the way as well. Plus, we're here from three top S-League managers as well. Plus, Singapore's hope of silverware in Subutio. <laughs> World number 117, by the way. In the meantime, let's get to the latest sports news with your producer, our producer, the world's producer, Nicholas Lim. Thanks, Andy. We start in football. Jordanian prince and FIFA presidential candidate Prince Ali wants the partnership between the Asian and African football governing bodies examined. Prince Ali said he's aware of the possibility of block voting, particularly after the Asian Football Confederation and the Confederation of, Afri African, football, of African Football signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the Development of Football in their regions. AFC President Sheikh Salman, who is likely to run against Prince Ali in the election, was a key part of the deal. Prince Ali expressed concern that there could be a breach in electoral, electoral rules and has risen to the FIFA Electoral Committee to examine the issue. 
Elsewhere, PDRM coach Fauzi Pilus has revealed that new signing Safwan Barudin has played, will play as a box-to-box midfielder. The former Lions 12 star can play as an attacking midfielder and also anywhere across the back four. But Fauzi said he will deploy Safwan in a more dynamic position as the, as the Malaysian side aim for silverware in the coming season. And finally, in golf, former world number one Rory McIlroy says he will return to action at the Honda Classic next month. The world number three has been out of action for over two months after undergoing laser eye surgery to improve his putting. McIlroy will be looking for a good performance at the Honda Classic as he attempts to close the gap on Jordan Spieth at the top of the world rankings. Nicholas Tim, uh, you're everyone's producer with this latest sports news. Thanks very much for that. Hey, would you fancy winning yourself a brand new top of the range Samsung phone? What? Yeah, you do. It's the Big Red Car Football Challenge brought to you by Samsung Sports Flow. All you have to do is give us your best football chant. Uh, the way to enter is to go to the Samsung Sports Flow app and go to the Red Card Sports Radio channel and enter it in the Sports Chats chat section. What's the best chant we've had so far, Nick? I still maintain it's the, the, the one you made up for you, Sir Halim. Oh, it's a Halim. You know what I mean, you win everything. It's a Halim. Didn't sing it yesterday. Well, there were only 10 people there. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Brilliant. Uh, some more excellent guests on the way. We've already heard from John Wilkinson, who said he would be turning up in the studio, but didn't make it. Up next, former Channel V VJ, supermodel, me judge, event host, YouTube fan fest host, model, drama, TV presenter, e-newser, Asia host, Tumi Global citizen, wannabe pilot, motorbike rider, red carpet Oscar man, Newcastle fan, Asia Pop 40 host, traveller, Star World host, Digital Matters host, band member, sports presenter of the year 2013, self-proclaimed Asian from the waist up, the Eurasian persuasion, the soon-to-be YouTuber, the muffin maker, made that last one up it's Dom Lau hi Dom hey what's going on are we am I on right now you're on right now that's awesome hey that was a really awesome introduction thank you very much I think I love you thanks bro but just before we go we get on to um you know more pressing matters yeah can you just treat everybody to the hi I'm Dom Lau you mean the hi I'm Dom well, Lau because you, you are look at look at how experienced you are at radio you're making me look like you know Minnie Mouse here are you kidding me I'm wearing the left earphone on my right ear that's <laughs> I'm not experienced at all I, this is like my first time I feel I'm so nervous to be standing next to you but I'll d- Hi, I'm Dom Lau, and I'm here with Andy Penders, and I'm so privileged to be staying in the studio with this guy because he is awesome. See? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm Dom Lau, and you're listening to Red Card Sports Radio. If you're not listening to it, then you won't hear me say that you should be listening to it. And if you are listening to it, you need to tell your friends to start listening because Andy is awesome. Do you do much in the way of voiceover work? I don't. You oh, should. Oh, I, well, only I with you. you. Only with you. Can I be your voiceover guy? Do you, do you need a voiceover guy? Uh, we can't afford you, bro. Listen, I'll do it for nothing, just for you. All right, done. What, what, Wait, have I said that live now on air? I can't <laughs> take that back now, can I? Yeah, and we'll be rolling that throughout the rest of the week. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Don? Not much, man. I'm here in the Lion City. You know, I've come down. I've spent a lot of my time down the here. Lion in The Lion City, man. Let's get the presenter out of me right now, okay? Yeah, I'm here down in Singapore, you know, just chilling. I come down to Singapore very regularly, in fact. You know, I'm from Hong Kong, as you yeah. know, but I spend a lot of time here in Singapore. It's my second home, and uh, you're like my, uh, you know, you're my best friend down here. Well, that's the kind thing to say. And, you know, I don't get a, a chance to see you very much, Andy, because, you know, you're very busy these days hosting Red yeah. Card Sports Radio, amongst other things as well. Um, up the workers, right? I mean, that's what we do. That's what you do. And you're working with Asia Pop 40 at the moment? At the moment, yes. Asia Pop 40. It's a syndicated radio show that goes uh, broadcast all over Asia and indeed here in the Lion City of Singapore on 987 FM. Do you actually put on a voice then when you do it? It's weird. I, it, every time. What's like, your normal voice? Then? This is my normal hey, voice. What's your normal voice? <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but but it's nice to have a radio voice, right? Yeah, well, uh, they tell me I I've never been told I have a, a voice for radio. I've been told I've got a face for radio, which is why <laughs> I, I guess I do what I do. Um, but yeah, no. As soon as the record light comes on, as soon as the microphone is in my hand, you know this, Andy. You see me do live events. <laughs> as soon as the microphone is in my hand this presenter voice comes on and it's like, hey guys, welcome to the most awesome event of the year. And this is like my presenter voice. It is, but I just love it. It's weird. But it's, it's cool. cool. I, it's cool. Well, you, you do it as well. I mean, I've heard you do your presenter voice. Yeah. I've heard you try to do me. Come on, try, try and imitate me. Hi. See, I, I'm knowing. Hi, I'm Andy Penders. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, you've got a knack for it, man. And how's the Asia... So, hang on. Asia Pop 40 means yes. you get to meet some really famous people. Well, you know, 
Yes, yes, it's one of the perks of my jobs. I Go guess on. you know we get to meet a few people here and there. Um, I've interviewed a lot of artists so far. Uh, we've been down to the Aria Awards for the last couple of years now. We've been in the Grammy Awards. Uh, we're going to the Grammy Awards again this year in February. Where's that? Uh, that's happening in, Lo in Los Angeles. It always happens in Los Angeles, Andy. Yeah, just for anyone who wasn't for everyone, sure. Okay, for everyone else that wasn't sure where the, where the Los Angeles Grammys are, it's in Los Angeles. Um, no, but seriously, we, we do interview a lot of people. And what we how, do, how hard did you party with Bieber? How hard? How hard did you party with Bieber? I, well, this is radio, right? This hard. <laughs> <laughs> that hard. No, um, uh, B B Justin Bieber, okay, I'm going to raise my hand here. Hand on my heart. I am now a believer. I wasn't before, met the guy a few times, and he's actually all right. He he's, is actually a cool dude. He Snapchatted you. He did Snapchat me, yes. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> he Snapchatted me. He mentioned me on Twitter a few times. Yeah. And uh, when we saw each other for the second time, which was down in Australia, um, he gets around. We get around. And uh, he says, hey, Tom, it's good to see you again, buddy. No. Way. He remembered your name. He, no, he didn't. I'm lying. He well, went, hey. He's like, hey, I remember you, the guy from Hong Kong. In fact, we did a we did a little uh, like a, we gave him a, the microphone to do a little vox pop for us, and he went, "Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Justin Bieber, and you're listening to Asia Pop 40 with your boy." Uh, I forgot my name. Oh no! Yeah, it made me cry. But you still believe in him. But I still believe in him. Yes, I do believe in him, and he's been nominated for a Grammy this year, first time ever. Believe it. Who else have you met? Who else have I met? Yeah. Oh, a few people, man. Met the. Let's see. Wow, where do I begin? Well, um, I don't know. Lady Gaga, she was cool. No, what? Way, man. She's totally cool. Uh, who else have we met? Uh, you know, we've met Shepard. We've met the Vamps. We've met Before You Exit. We've met, um, who else? Gosh. Uh, but good show, and it's syndicated okay. well around, around the region. And yeah, you know, and that's it's similar to what you're doing right now, and this is why I got lots of respect for you guys here at Red Card, because it's, it's what people in Asia need. It's what people in Asia want, and we're trying our very best to give it to them. You know? So obviously everyone's familiar with the names from the UK and from the United States in particular, um, and that's what people are watching out here in Asia. But what people want, I, f I believe from people I've spoken to, what they like to see are people from Asia giving them the exact same kind of service, you know, talking about sports. Here in Asia, you don't have to listen to the guys in the UK for that. You don't have to listen to the guys in the US for that. Andy Penders can do it. Uh, and I try to do the same thing with, uh, with Asia Pop 40 as well. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah. It's not the only thing you're up to as well. Um, you seem to know a lot more about me than I do. Bro, I used to live next door to you. That's true. That's true. The stories we could tell. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you remember that time? No, no, let's not, not go there. Hey, um... Some fans are written in with some quickfire questions. Have they? Yeah. That is unbelievable. Okay. No, as in I really don't believe that. <laughs> no, but Hit me. they haven't, but they're quite, they're quite hardcore questions, so I'm passing, palming them off on some other people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So <clears throat> Kelly Latimer's written in. Okay, no, hit me, yeah. hit me. What's the best rumor you've heard about yourself? The best rumor I've heard about uh, myself? From Azim. Uh, I've got big feet. Have you got small feet? I don't. The rumors are true. Rumors are allowed to be true, you know. They're not necessarily false. I've got big feet. Big feet, big socks. <laughs> you, you waiting for the live stream of questions to come through? Yeah, yeah, they're coming in on Twitter now. Yes. Yeah, oh, wow. Wow, look at that. How, you just have to pause it. This is from uh, Hazrin. What's the most famous person you've kissed? Paula Abdul. What? Paula Abdul. No, I'm... I, I've I'm, got a photo of us kissing. It's true. It was just a peck. Oh. Yeah. It was. Oh, you mean, do you mean like a proper kiss? Yeah. Most famous person I've ever kissed. <sighs> famous. Like someone that's like being on TV and stuff, that kind of thing. Probably, uh, like, I don't know. It's my girlfriend. Anybody listening? Oh, well, it's my girlfriend. Jo jo Joanne Durazario. Jo there you go. There you go. Was that a trick question right there? That was actually from Joanne, wasn't it? Uh, these are cameras, by the way. Are they? Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was from Joanne Durazario. <laughs> 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 What's your best football match ever? Because you're a big Newcastle fan. Right? I am. You often go down to Boat Key to see away all the boys. I do. I do, yeah. Down the Penny Black with all the uh, the other Geordies and the adopted Geordies, yeah. And what's the best match you've seen as a Geordie fan? What, you mean in the stadium, at the stadium or just like ever, like on TV or whatever? Because I've only ever been, because I don't live in Newcastle, first of all. But you are half Newcastleian. I am half Newcastleian. Yes, I, I have black and white blood coursing through my veins. Wow. Um, I've only ever been to watch a match at St. James's twice, mm -hmm. uh, and that was a long time ago. Uh, we l drew to Middlesbrough and lost to Leeds. 
So that was that was a shame. But uh, the best match I've ever watched clearly has to be uh, the five-one drubbing of Manchester United. Yeah, yeah. That was an awesome game. The way Philippe Albert just loved Schmeichel. That was a beautiful goal. We stuffed him. Can I say that on radio? Yep. We stuffed him. What's your most embarrassing moment on air? Um, probably. Hmm, good question. Most embarrassing moment on air. Uh, <laughs> this is for real. Uh, it was when I was at the Oscars. And um, I was talking to John Travolta and his wife, Kelly Preston, and uh, I was asking him some questions about like, hey, so what are you even doing here at the Oscars? Oh, you're presenting. Oh, cool. That was the first take up I had. Like, oh, cool. John Travolta's presenting an Oscar. I was like thinking, John Travolta hasn't done a film in a very long time. What's he doing here? So he was presenting. Uh, and I said, must be exciting, right? Presenting an award. And then he says to me, well, it's actually not the first time I've done it. I've done it like six times now already, Dom. That was embarrassing. Yeah. And that was live on air all over Asia. That's just poor research. That was poor research on my part. But uh, also, I was just, it, just... I was at the Oscars, man. How big is he then, John Travolta? So, Height-wise. I know. Not weight-wise. Um, he's probably about uh, yay high. What is that, 5'11"? Five, because five, mo- most of the movie stars are quite short, aren't they? They're, they're smaller in person. Yeah. Have you met Tom Cruise? I have not met Tom but Cruise. But you met no. virtually everybody else, though. Well, I've met a few people. Met Will Smith? I met Will Smith, yes. He's tall. He's like my height. He's like your height, our height. Okay. Yeah, he's like, he's nice. Yeah, he's Who's cool. the nicest then out of all that? The life? nicest of all of them, probably... Um, your top three. Top three. Okay, the nicest people I've ever met. Will Smith is up there. Uh, Dame Helen Mirren is up there. And Robert Downey Jr. He was cool. Oh, actually, no. Uh, Mickey Rourke. He was pretty cool. No, yeah. yeah. Fist bumped me and everything, man. We talked about Guns N' Roses. It was, it was great. Wow, good yeah. stories, man. Oh, but the, yeah, yeah. This, uh, the, the, these are true. <laughs> Everything. I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. I couldn't, you know. Uh, <laughs> and this was during your time mostly at Star World. That's correct, Andy. So the, the pennies dropped. It was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, well, let, let's just put this into context because I want to yeah. get onto the, the sports presenting just briefly. Sure. Because you, you hold a very acclaimed award. That I've not even been nominated for yet, but, but one day. You will. It's my dream. You'll own it. It's my dream. Absolutely. I'll so, vote for you. So I get some tips. Uh, still to come, we've, I'm going to do a movie quiz with you, a Star Wars quiz as well. Sweet. Yeah, because uh, Dom's a bit of a movie buff. We'll also talk about your um, upcoming YouTube channel. Right. Which is on the way. Looking forward to seeing what characters you're going to be having on that, on that channel. Uh, still to come, S League players are on the way. Uh, we're with Dominic Lau, a TV and radio personality. It's great to be here. <laughs> um, right, I've got so many questions. So where should I go? That's a, hey, that's a thesis you have in front of you. Um, yeah, at the moment, you're a Chimi Global citizen. Yes, that is correct. What does that mean? And it, how do I, how, more importantly, yeah. how do I get to be a Chimi Global citizen? Well, you know what? The, th- first, the first prerequisite is you've got to do a lot of traveling. So they kind of, you know, look for people that travel a lot. So clearly, I travel a lot between Hong Kong and Singapore. And as I said earlier, we go to the Grammys, so we go to Los Angeles, we go down to the Aries, we go to Sydney, uh, and everywhere in between for interviews, junkets, you name it, and events, festivals. So I do a lot of traveling. Anyway, I don't know why or how they chose me specifically. I was among a few other people that they selected, and they said, right, well, would you like to, you know, uh, be an ambassador for our brand? I said, yeah, cool. Because I, I, again, this is... Like, I'm, I'm not being paid to say this or anything, but I'm a fan of the Tumi products, man. They are very, very cool, very well designed, very, you know, durable and stylish. And it's everything everything you could possibly want out of a good quality piece of luggage when you're traveling. Yeah, so Tumi Global Citizen. Everybody's a Tumi Global Citizen, though. We decided that it's not just the people that have been selected. Everyone's a Tumi Global Citizen. Would I you like a Tumi bag? I love one. Are they expensive? I'll, well, I'll get one arranged for you. Hey, thank you very much. Well, who are the other ambassadors? There's a few. Uh, you might recognize Nico Rosberg. He's a Formula One driver, of course. So he's yeah, have you a, met him? I have met him, yes. I have met him. Um, he's also, uh, we actually did a little bit of, I wouldn't call it work, and it wasn't actually, we didn't work together, but we were both um, doing some work for Thomas Sabo, uh, the, the jewelry brand. Um, so, of course, he's sponsored by Thomas Sabo. And uh, at the time, I was doing some stuff for Thomas Sabo, and we met at a, at a party together and said, hey, man, nice bracelet. He goes, yeah, you too, and uh, had a drink, had a chit-chat, and that was it. Any other F1 stars you've met? No, sadly. Oh, actually, no, I have. I've met Jensen Button. Yeah. Jensen Button, yes. He's a very cool guy. Really sad to see that uh, he's, he's split with his, uh, with his beautiful wife. 
uh, or ex-wife. Um, and also a shame to see that uh, McLaren's not doing so well. They're, they, you know, British race race car team. You you support McLaren, Andy? Uh, I don't really care for F1. Do you not? But if you had to, you'd support the British team, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not the hugest F1 fan in the world, I must admit, but I support McLaren, but uh, sadly they're not doing very well. Um, seeing as you're on, I want to do a freestyle battle with you, rap battle. Are you, you, you're going to put me on the spot like this? I, I want a freestyle rap battle. I'm rubbish. At, I'm not that good at rapping, right? But I still think I can take you down. Okay. Okay, R so Nick. Drop a beat. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, just find that uh, that rap beat that we had the, the other time, Did and we'll get onto that. In have you done minute. this with other guests? No, I don't think so. I don't. Why are you picking on me? Because whenever we're out having a few beers, we have a rap battle. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, where's the lager at? Let's have one. Yeah, actually, we should. What, I, what I'm thinking about doing with this show yeah. is slowly getting more and more drunk right. throughout the show, right? To give it a hook. Well, you know, it, it's becoming more and more. Uh, viable now and, and you know Matt Balasai um, he rec he's a YouTuber he works for BuzzFeed uh, you can follow him BuzzFeed.com slash Matt Balasai he hosts a show called Wine About It have you heard of this? No you haven't heard of Wine About It it's, uh, it's a play on words what he does is he sits there at his desk in his office at BuzzFeed and he uh, he whines about stuff for like five minutes but before he does that he gets drunk on wine so he just pours himself empties out a bottle of uh, you know red wine white wine whatever it might be skulls it and then looks dead into the camera and starts going, right, and there's different topics every week, like why people who travel with you on airplanes are the worst and stuff like that. That sounds a good idea. And he won the award for best YouTuber, best online personality, I should say, best online personality at the People's Choice Award. The people voted, they were heard, and he won. So and you're involved with the uh, YouTube Fan Fest? Yes, I, I am involved with YouTube Fan Fest. Very cool. What you is know about YouTube habit? Well, you know, now these days, A-list, uh, you know, mainstream celebrities, you know, they'll always be celebrities, they'll always be A-listers, but uh, the YouTubers of the world are now fast becoming, um, you know, they're being seen in the same, you know, spotlight as, as these A-listers, you know? We're, we're live on YouTube now? Are we live on YouTube now? Well, there you go. There you go. And how, how many subscribers do you have, Andy? I've got about 50. Excellent. That's very, that's 50 more than I've got. Actually, that's 48 more than I've got. <laughs> My, my mom recently subscribed, <laughs> <laughs> and I subscribed to myself. But uh, no, yeah, so this, the YouTube Fan Fest is essentially like, it's, a, it's an opportunity for the fans to get up close and personal, to meet their favorite YouTubers. These are people that are getting, you know, over a billion, that's billion with a B, views. Do that, do that in, your, in your voice. These are people that are getting over a billion views for every video that they post online. They have over <laughs> one million subscribers each of their channels, and they also travel the world and endorse various products because their celebrity status outshines some of the world's most predominant celebrities. Now, when you, you launch your YouTube channel, have you thought of a name for it yet? So because because on Twitter you asked everybody to come up with a name for your YouTube channel. I did, yeah. And what sort of responses did you get? Well, there were some th there were some fun ones. There were some not so fun ones. Uh, thank you to everybody that uh, you know tweeted and, and gave a suggestion. There was one that stood stood out um, that I kind of liked. Uh, it was a play on my last name. Um, I think it was Living Loud. So L A U apostrophe D, uh, which I kind of liked. I like it you too. Know? Or Live you, and Loud. I don't know. Oh, that yeah. Yeah. Would you, are you dropping the G on the living with a little apostrophe as well? I think so. Two apostrophe. You need two apostrophe. If you do apostrophe one word, you have to apostrophe the other. I, I don't even know if that's proper English, but hey, there you go. What sort of characters would you? What can we be looking forward to there then? Well, that's the thing. You see, I'm not the kind of guy. I don't think people out there are going to be interested in me filming myself as myself. Going, this is my bedroom. This is my wall, and this is where I eat dinner and stuff like that. So I figured I'd have a little bit of fun with it, and as you say, make some characters up. So. Coming from Hong Kong, growing up, one of my favorite uh, things do, to do was to mimic the Chinese English accent, if you will. Uh, it's the, you know, the way the Chinese use uh, speak English in Hong Kong. And uh, I don't personally believe it's making fun of it. It's just something that it's an accent like any other. Um, but uh, growing up, as I say. So how would, uh, what's the name of this character? Have you got? Well, growing up, as I say, uh, I'd always get in trouble with uh, security guards for menial little things like in shopping malls. Now, these guys at shopping malls have nothing really better to do except for, you know, throw down their authority, lay down the law, as it were, you know. So if you are sitting on a step waiting for a friend, you know, as kids do, teenagers do at the shopping mall, this security guard would come over and he would just say no to you. But he wouldn't say it like that. He'd say it in a Chinglish accent and go, low. Excuse me? 
Low, 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 low. Well, I'm just sitting here. Can I not, I'm just waiting for my friend. Low, low, priest. Low, low, low. So I figure uh, the first character I do is Mr. Low, the Chinese security guard, right? And there'd be like, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. Excuse me, um, do you have the time? Low. No, I just, you're wearing a watch. I just want to, low, 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 low. <laughs> that's, that's about as far as I've gotten with, with, right, my, love it. with my ideas. All right, looking forward to that. You're a massive movie buff as well, Dom. I love movies, don't hey, If I give you a, um, a movie quote, yeah. can you tell me who said it and what the movie is? It's Dom now playing the top Red Cut Sports Radio movie quiz. Andy Penders will say the name of a famous quote. Dom now will give him the answer. One dollar for every correct answer. But, you, but I've got to try and guess, right? Look, they're simple, man. I'm going to start off with a simple one, okay? Right, hit me, hit me. Say hello to my little friend. Would that be Al Pacino in Scarface? Yeah, as... As... Tony Montana, yeah. Oh, you want the character name, well, not the actor's name? Just to get extra, extra money. Okay, extra oh, money for that. Oh, okay, cool. Bonus points. I so, get one dollar. Cool. Right. Why so serious? Why so serious? That'd be Heath Ledger as the Joker in Dark Knight. Uh, do you think I'd be too stupid to know what uh, you Julie, you Googly is? You, ju- you Googly is? Do you think I'd be too stupid to know what a you Googly is? Eulogy, you Googly is? Should we skip that one? Because I don't have no idea. It was, it's in I, I, it's Zoolander. No, I think if you were going to do a Zoolander one, you'd, you'd say something like, I can derelict my own balls, thank you very much. You had me at Hello. Oh, love that movie. That would have been Tom Cruise as Tobey Maguire in Tobey Maguire. I got uh, Jerry Maguire. Sorry, did I say Tobey Maguire? I meant Jerry Maguire. You talking to me? Oh, Robert De Niro, taxi driver. I forget his character name, though. Travis Bickle. Everybody runs Fletch. What? Everybody runs Fletch. Everybody runs Fletch. It's Tom Cruise in Minority Report. Get busy living or get busy dying? Wow, these are hard. Yeah, well, of course they're hard. Um, get busy running or get busy dying. Yeah. Uh, is that Running Man? One of your favorite films, The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, yeah. Tim Robbins. Uh, he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Um, he's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> 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 oh, Nick, yeah, that one. Hold on. Do you know that one? Like, something tells me this could this this could be flawed. This test. It might have something to do with the way that that it, Andy's reading these. Well, yeah, I'm trying to give it to you. No, but that's how it's, it's the, the Monty Python's life for Brian. Do you, know, do you know, I've only ever seen that once. Yeah, understood. How do you like them apples? Okay, which movie did you want? Because they've been in loads, right? That line's been... Ha- ha- sorry, again? How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can just give me one that you think it is. Um, so I was being clever there. But now I, I've made... Goodwill be- Hunting, I got. Do you know what? What? I've never seen Goodwill Hunting. Oh, okay, okay. I love lamp. I love lamp. Uh, uh, that would be um, uh, Anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy um, by, uh, what's his name? Steve Carell, who plays. Hold on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Buck, whip. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that guy. Champ. No, that's the other guy. <laughs> Tony Fontana, that's the other guy. What's his name? You've got it right, anyway. Yeah, him. I wish I knew how to quit you. You see, when you say... What? Okay, I'm okay. saying it in the normal way to throw you off. All right, okay. I wish I knew how to quit you. Is that broke that down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. You need a deep voice to yeah, do that, right? That, w- that would be Liam Neeson. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know the line? Taken. No, I don't. Do, do you want to read it? Well, could you do the accent is what I'm asking. An Irish accent? Yeah. No, I couldn't. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Wow. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. I'm going to make him an offer. <laughs> is that? He can't, he can't refuse. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> is that some sort of gangster movie? Yeah, Godfather. Yeah, Marlon Brando is on Cagliari. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to life than being really, really ridiculously good looking, and I plan on finding out what it is. The life of Andy Penders. <laughs> no, be, that'd be Zoolander. Yeah. By Derek Zoolander. Correct. Yeah, okay. These are hard, man. Yeah, I know, man, but they are featured in the 100 top movie lines in the Telegraph from last as of last year. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. okay. It's like, how much more black could this be? And the answer is none. None more black. Yeah. Okay. Should have gone like junior movie quiz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should have gone junior movie quiz JR. Y yeah, yeah. That's um. This is Spinal Tap. Haven't seen it. Why are you, you're a rock star? You're a drummer. I know. Give me, give me. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you could do. You could have done the beat for our rap, which we've got queued up. Uh, on the way, it's Dominic Lau, by the way. Um, movie star? Are you a movie star yet? No, no. <laughs> Are you a movie star yet? No, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, still working on it. I haven't decided. I'm Future movie star Dom Lau's in the house with Andy Penners talking about his career and uh, his love for movies and films that he's never watched before. Mm -hmm. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions and loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus, Marcus Aurelius. That would be Maximus from, uh, well, his, he said his name. In Father there. to a murdered wife. Son. Son. Husband. husband to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Oh, oh yeah. Good. Last one. Okay. You won't get this one because it's one of my favorite films. Right Seriously, here. you won't. Okay. We want the finest wines available to humanity, and we want them here, and we want them now. That is Richard E. Grant in With Nell and I. Oh, With Nell and I. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Right, we're with uh, Dom now. Let's just take a quick break. Plenty of Premier League action coming your way on Red Card Sports Radio. After the break, I'm going to challenge Dom to the first ever Red Card Sports Radio rap battle. Freestyle rap battle, that is. Uh, plus, we've got S-League coaches uh, Jörg Steinbrunner and Hasri Jalin on the show as well. How many eight? Team news, score flashes, and the best footballing guess. Red Card Sports Radio. Next weekend on Barclays Premier League Live, Norwich City versus Liverpool from Carrow Road. And there is a ginger affair again. Oh, what a try that is! A fantastic goal from Johnny Housen, who almost breaks the back of the net with a volley from 25 yards. In towards Benteke, it's going to come down for yes! Liverpool! Level. It's Joe Allen! The substitute has done it! Jurgen Klopp runs down the touchline, Jose Mourinho like, and Liverpool have picked Arsenal back! Manchester United versus Southampton from Old Trafford. Memphis here for United. Shot block. Rooney! Way Rooney is back with a hellacious bang from the edge of the area. Goal Manchester United. And then puts it downfield and it's flicked on by Davis and Tadic's goal side into the area. He's taken too long to shoot, but eventually he gets the effort away. And it's under Gomez. He got something on it. But it's just squirmed underneath the Brazilian who's made so many saves this evening. West Ham United versus Manchester City from Upton Park. Eddie Valencia goes for goal and what a strike from Eddie Valencia. The angle looked almost impossible and I said with Dimitri Payet off the field they could have really done with him because you'd fancy him to score from here. They didn't need him. Sanya keeps the ball in play with a swirling ball looking for Aguero! Could Aguero! Heads Manchester City into the lead. His first away goal of the season. And is that the goal? That is the turning point in Manchester City's away day nightmares. Everton versus Swansea City from Goodison Park. Tom cleverly in some space uh, for Everton. He will look long for Lukaku. Not it down. This is uh, Aaron Lennon to strike one. And Aaron Lennon to score against Spurs. The side that he left in the summer. Everton's first real attack of note in the game ends with a fabulous finish from Aaron Lennon. Takes on Catamol, beats him. Brilliant goal! Andre Ayu for the 10th man of Swansea. Danced into the penalty area and then sent the ball fizzing across the goalkeeper and into the far corner. It's a stunner from Andre Ayu. Arsenal versus Chelsea from the Emirates Stadium. Turns it back into Campbell. Campbell tries to slip it through. Will it fall for Arsenal? It will! Olivier Giroud! And for the first time tonight, the Gunners lead at Anfield in what is turning into an absolute classic.
sick. Here's William. Good cross from the right hand side, and it's a goal out of nothing. A goal for the replacement. It's Kennedy, the Brazilian, who's got it. His first Premier League goal of the season, his second of the campaign in total. That's all coming up next weekend on Barclays Premier League Live from Talk Sport. You're with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio. Welcome everyone, it's the Andy Penner Show on Red Card Sports Radio. Don, I was just like, is, is this your show jingle? Uh, is this your jingle? I like it. Did you do the drums and the... the no, I didn't, but it's a one-man band who did do it called Nico Coyez. And a big shout-out to him. I want to get him. He's a flutist. A flautist. Huh? A flautist. No, he's a, he plays the flute. Yeah. <laughs> so they're called... Flute. Never mind. And uh, so hopefully he's going to come on the show. Now, um, you're a, a band member of Ur- Uranus. Yes, that's true. That's correct. That's, that's the name of the band. That's relatively, yes, that's correct. And you're an awesome, you're an awesome um, drummer. Thank I've you. seen you drum. Thank you. Exactly like that. Come on, give us a thing. Give us a, give us like a. Nice. Yeah, one. you know, it's a. I'm not really sure my forte here. And um, I'm, I'm not warmed up. I'm not limber. Um, Karen's just written in and said, "What are your top three karaoke songs?" <laughs> oh, bless you, Karen. Uh, top, my, my go to if I had to go you, to a karaoke place. You go to. Like, well, first of all, I can't sing, but if I had to, uh, uh, what, uh, what's the one that starts with "Cause lately"? Cause lately. Yeah, that one. Oh, Pretty cause right. lately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wherever you will go. How's that, and how would you do that? Well, I would try to my best to put on that that dude's voice and just kind of you know. I don't know. Um, so don't, hey, well, stop, stop, stop. Don't I say I don't know? No, no, I'm trying well, to. I've known you for 10 years. Yeah. And you do it. Well, I, don't go to kar- I don't go to karaoke. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, sorry. Okay, so. So lately, been wandering. Like that, right? Awesome, love it. Yeah, yeah. It gets the crowds going. You got it, yours, right? Yeah. And then uh, anything else? Oh, Karen wants to know what the other two are. Does she? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Karen, bless you. Um, Oh, well, you know, uh... What about Eminem? Hey, I wouldn't mind doing some Eminem. Eminem, Eminem, yeah. I like Eminem stuff, he's cool. As long as you get the words there, I'll be all right. Okay, good job. And the last one? Anything, anything What's wrong? your favorite um, song to play on the drums? Oh, there's so many. Yeah. I just love it. I love... Rather than play a particular song, I've got just favorite drummers like Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters, Dennis Chambers is a session musician, Neil Peart from Rush, uh, Jimmy Chamberlain from the Smashing Pumpkins, uh, gosh, so many, uh, Jose the CS from Incubus, like a, just whatever, loads of songs. That's something you're passionate into. I, yeah, I love playing drums. Drums, if I could make, if I could, you know, support my family, and, and myself and everything, and just by playing the drums, I would definitely. Wow. As such, my dream would be into, it would be to be in a rock band. Wow. Yeah. Is that have you ever got close to that? Uh, no, sadly, we haven't we haven't come close to being. Ditch them, boys. Should we start our own band? Well, I can't do it. I can play a triangle. That's it. Well, that's we. I was looking for a triangle. Player, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's important. Uh, tri- triang- tri- triangulist. That's tri- tri- what we call ourselves. Or, well, triangle trionglist. Tri- yeah. Make yourself sound you know, a bit fun. more special than that. Sure. I'm having so much fun. When? Now. When? Really? Yeah. Oh, good. It's good, it's good medium, the old radio. I love it. Yeah. I love this. And I'm just hanging out, and this is a cool studio. And we're, we're actually on the bar top. We, we are at a bar right Familiar now. Familiar settings. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, tell us about your bike and your love for bikes. I love bikes. Um, don't. Yeah, I love bikes. I, I actually have a motorcycle back home. I have a, it's a Ducati Monster. It's an 1100S, and uh, I love it. It's my baby. Um, and much to the dismay of Joanne and, and, and friends of mine who just kind of go, oh, don't be an idiot, uh, I'm, I'd like to get a Harley. But I've been told by, by many that I'm too young to get a Harley, which is nice. It's nice to be told, but you're far too young. How, how old are you now? Uh, I'm in my early 30s. Yeah. So 30, 34. 
You're what? <laughs> it's you're 34. No, is it, is it 34? Early? I, do you know, I was thinking about this in the cab on the way over. I can't actually remember. Yeah, I can't remember. I, 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 I don't know. I, it's, it's funny, when you, the younger you are, the more you want to remember your birthday, and the older you get, you, the more you want to forget about it. This is very true. Sometimes you don't have a choice, you just actually legitimately forget stuff when you get older. I enjoyed you on television, uh, Supermodel Me as a judge, mm. good fun. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed you on uh, Singtel, you were the, uh, with Tara Rushton, doing the Sunday morning roundup, goal with P roundup goals with PJ Roberts. Yeah, yeah, that was so much fun, I really, really enjoyed it. And PJ's good to work with. PJ is awesome to work with. He's yeah. one of the coolest, most awesomest dudes I've ever met. That we've ever really? met. Really? I wouldn't go. I mean, I, I love him, but I wouldn't go that far. Really? Yeah, okay. He's a nice guy, though. I thought I was supposed to say nice things about him, but if we're being honest, then yeah, no, I just. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, but the best thing about him is that the way you build up to the show, because he's always pranking around. and He is. That's the cool thing. I mean, what people. I mean, you, you, you've done this. You're Thank a TV you. presenter yourself. You know, you. What people don't see when they're sitting at home on the couch or, or wherever they are watching the show, you know, when we're on a commercial break, we like to goof around. Yeah. Don't, and don't, then, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> don't you? And, well, all the time. And then Tara Russian's gone to do some really good things in Australia. She has. She's heading up Fox and their, their MMA coverage now and their football coverage as well. Yep. So so she's is some sports coverage something that you, after winning Sports Presenter of the Year, sort of hung your, your, your mic up, uh, so to speak. Uh, for, you mean for sports? Yeah. Uh, no, I would never rule out doing sports again. Um, it's a lot of fun, you know, and it helped that, you know, I'm a football fan. Well, I should say I'm a Newcastle United fan first and foremost. But uh, but really, it, it, it helps having people, as you say, like Tara and PJ who are there to... Um, I guess, you know, support. And good producer as well. You had uh, oh, Ju Julian Tuig was there with you. Ju Julian Tuig was there. We had Sharky Tan was there. Yeah. We had Alvin Lee was there. We've had just, there's so many cool people to work with, um, you know, here in Singapore and indeed around Asia. And a lot of people, and being serious now, a lot of people, again, they don't see is all the hard work that goes in to producing these shows yeah. behind the scenes. And so, so here's a shout out to all the, all the crew, all the camera guys, all the lighting guys, the gaffers, the producers, the writers, the researchers, all of you guys out there, big shout out. Much love in it. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, tell us about winning that award. Well, I wasn't there for it. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that's even more classy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I knew this was coming. No. Did I you? Just, did you like? They tell you beforehand, and did you do a video? No. We, no what? I, no, I didn't. Do, it's not like the Oscars, man. No, I didn't do that. But uh, but thankfully, to to my relief, uh, my producer Julian Tuig was there to accept the award on my behalf. And so, as I understand it from what I've been told from eyewitnesses is he uh, made it to the stage and collected the award on my behalf and hey. said a few things. A good speech too, I heard. I heard it was an amazing speech. Uh, hey, congratulations on that. That's awesome because you, you. I think you deserve that because you know there's um, a way of delivering sports information to people. Sure. And clearly that year, I thought you were awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, brother. Um, so how much did you have to pay to... to uh, well, actually, I had to clean up my bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, uh, it took me a while to recoup Actually, to get nominated... I've not been nominated. Yet, um, yet. No, no, I, I, I'm... No, I don't know. What? No, I've, I've always... I've ruled myself out. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. I can't afford the 250 bucks entry fee. Is that how much it is? Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. How do you know that? Because I was going to look at filling my own form in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I thought, well, I can't afford that. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's the Andy Penn, the show on Red Card Sports Radio. We are with radio and TV personality, Dom Lau. Also on the show, S. Lee coaches are here, plus uh, Singapore's Sabutio Hope. For silverware, the under twenty one is he under twenty one international? No, it's not. He's just he's just playing for Singapore. Okay, under twenty one. Uh, he's 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 the sprite. He's the sprite among all the uncles. I like it. I like sprite. And have you ever heard of Sabutio? Uh, I've, I've read about him a few times. Right. <laughs> so the the Brazilian yeah f uh, centre forward for Flamingo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny. Hey, just looking at your career, Dom. Sure. It's mental. Is it? Well, you know. Well, there's just so much that you've done. Well, tell us, was, was modeling fun? No, it was not. For me, anyway, it was not fun at all. Um, but I, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's how I made my um, transition into doing what I do now, into television. So it's hard for me to completely hate it. So, but no, it wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it at all because all you are is just, 
you're there, you work very, very uncomfortable hours, you're told to wear uncomfortable garments and do poses. I, I mean, I can't pose. First, well, first and foremost, I look nothing like a model. I certainly don't now, and I didn't back then, but someone somewhere thought that I, I had something. So, But one day, you know, I went to a casting, and it was for a position at Channel V, and that's, you know, talk about being in the right place at the right time. Uh, did the audition, went for the screen test, and that's how I got my way into TV. And then you were called VJ Dom, which sounds rather like a female contraceptive. It, it does sound like a female contraceptive, um, but you have to, it's VJ Dom. <laughs> VJ Dom. VJ J Dom. VJ J Dom, yeah. Um, awesome, and that was working with Paula, Paula Malay Ali. Yeah, yeah, that's where I first met Paula. Uh, and it was funny because two years before that, I was... Uh, at the time, I was living in China and was watching Channel V, and there was this this girl, VJ Paula. Gorgeous. VJ Paula. And uh, I was going, wow, cool, look at her. Wouldn't that be cool to meet her one day? And then before you knew it, uh, two years later, sitting in the studio with her doing my first show. It wow. was so nerve-wracking. And then you guys went on to uh, co-present a series for Scoot, which won an award recently. We did, yeah. But that was that was cool because it was, you know, over – nearly 10 years since Paul and I had worked together at Channel V and then we had this opportunity to work together again on Stretch or Splurge, um, which was cool, uh, we, we co-hosted. So, And it was easy because Paul is, you know, as you know, very talented, very very good, uh, strong personality and good host. So it was very, very easy to work with her. And she's now at the uh, Aussie Open. She is. I'm very, very envious and very jealous of her right now down there in the beautiful weather that is uh, in Australia and Melbourne. And She's going to have a good time. I can't wait for her to come back and tell us all the stories. She always got, you should bring her here in the studio and tell her to tell you all the stories. She's bet she has some filthy stories. You reckon? Dirty. What, like muddy? No, I'm just joking. Or yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd love to have Paula on the show. Yeah. I tried to get Colette in on the show. She wanted the old football crazy lot to come along. I like Colette. Yeah. Did I say that out loud? Everyone likes Nick. Do you, Nick, Nick, do you like Colette? Of course, man. Yeah. Of course. I love how innocent you put that. Yeah, of course. Like everyone. Of course. Yeah. she be like, of course. Yeah. Uh, breaking news, everyone. Charlie Austin has just signed for Southampton for a reported four million pounds. Oh, Charlie Austin. Oh, Charlie Lustin. Ooh, ah. That's out of left field, isn't it? it was, not, was he ever linked to Southampton? Yeah, all the time. He had yeah, the choice he? to go to either Newcastle or Southampton and went, it's sunny down south. I'm going down south. I thought it was linked to Crystal Palace at some point as well. He was linked to, well, he was linked to a few clubs, but. Uh, well, he turned down a few he, clubs. He turned down the right clubs, I suppose. Good signing, though. Good signing for Southampton, bad uh, signing for Charlie. Doesn't Austin. he play? Um, <laughs> does he play in a similar role to Graziano Pella then? What up front? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens to Pella? Rotate. Really? Yeah. Maybe he's off to Ju maybe he's off to Juventus. Pella's been linked. Yeah, to yeah. Could be going to Fiorentina. I don't mind him going actually. Don't anyone that wants to go, go. You know what I mean? Just go. go don't just go. Like Shearer did. Like what? Leaving Southampton or leaving Southampton. Blackburn? Yeah. Well, and Blackburn as well. But that's a different story and a we're different era. We're with Dominic Lau, radio and TV personality. What next for you, Dom? Uh, well, you know, a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. That's just a really professional and yeah. cringeworthy way of saying there's nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> you were at a casting the other day, were you? I was. I can't really divulge in that. I much. love all that. I can't divulge. I love it. Like, like Why? Because, like, you know, I mean, like, I don't, is it because we all care? Well, first, <laughs> well, no. First and foremost, well, they they might care. Yeah, that's true. You know, and and I don't want to jinx it. What is it? Oh, that's true. I don't want to jinx it. But there's other things going on. You know, there's a lot of things in the pipeline. No, I love that. Yeah, because you are always busy. You're always traveling, and you're see, Dom's the Jermaine Pennant of the entertainment world for me. Why is that? So much ability. Right. <laughs> so much potential. potential. <laughs> yeah. Lazy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Lazy. Lazy bit of a bad boy image. D me? Well, no, Pennant. Oh, yeah, Pennant. Who but I think you're like, yeah. yeah but but, but by, by definition, you're saying that I've got a bit of a bad boy oh, image. I think you're, he's maturing a lot now. Oh, good, good. I am. I mean, he is. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, he was he was there last week. Where was you are. Yeah, nice right guy. Right yeah, yeah. Really nice guy. Cool. Okay, well, if there's anything we can help you with. Well, Thank you for your support. I, I do because I know that. I know you love a mic, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to come on here, you know, more more frequently. You know, it'd be great to maybe maybe we can think up like a, a little segment or something I could yeah. do with you. Because I think you and I, we, you know, we could come up with some radio gold. Yeah, 
Uh, talking to Radio Gold, Dominic Lau considers himself something of a rap artist. Where I are you getting this information from? I know because I know you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm it's gonna chat. Okay, okay. Maybe even if you're not. Right. I'm gonna challenge you, my friend, to a rap battle. Do you accept my rap battle? You want a rap battle right now? Yeah. I okay. I, I'm not even prepared. No, I haven't had any wine. Just okay. oh yeah, no me. But that's why it's called freestyle. Look, close the computer, turn off the notes, boom. Hey, just me and you. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on. I, I, no, I need to hear the beat. I need to hear the. You, yeah, we need to hear the beat. But the beat. I, you know, I don't. You, you're talking to me. You're, you're kind of like pointing the finger at me as oh, I'm somebody that stays at home and wastes my time and makes like music rap videos, it doesn't even, selfies and things, and <laughs> you know it. It doesn't even rhyme, bro. It's rubbish. Well, neither does that. That was a poor rebuttal. Right, it's um, Nick Lim, um, DJ Nick Lim on the ones and twos. Drop me a beat. <laughs> okay, right. That was good. Let's just start again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, I didn't know what to, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, that was good. That what, was good. I, what, what's funny about that then? Oh, just, I think I've heard it before. It reminds me of something. For the record, I wasn't expecting it either, but I had it. Oh, I had it queued up. So high. Oh god. Are we doing? Wait, should we? Are we doing? Should we? Sh like, should you and I maybe rap about a topic or well, something? Well, should we? Is it, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! No, no, we funny. can't. We can't. We can't. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, right. The reason that's funny is because it's an inside joke. Isn't that great for t for radio and TV? <laughs> so we did this rap. Should we do it or not? Oh, well, you got to have a nice Show we'll come to the, the, the chicken in the gym. I don't know. Whether, okay, uh, should we do it? Can, yeah, we do it. I just do right, it. Sod that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Oh, uh, DJ, one Nick on the yeah, one. Yeah, but I don't remember my bit. Oh, that's because I don't do the chorus for you. All right. Hey. Yeah. Because we're not doing my bit. Okay. okay. Yeah. DJ Nick on the ones and twos, drop the beat. Hey, man. <laughs> so, uh, what's up with all these millennials today taking pictures of themselves? What are they called? Selfies, right? Yeah, how's that? What's my in line? First of all, oh, yeah, 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 start again. <laughs> start again. Let's start again. Okay. Right, okay, got it. I'm having a lot of trouble here with this camera. Why are you taking Why are you taking selfies, man? You don't even know how to take a selfie. Well, do you know how to take a selfie? Yeah, I do. I do. All right, teach, do. teach me. First of all, you got to have arms. If not, your selfie will come to harm. If you're a chick in the gym, sod that. I don't know where to begin. Photo bomb selfie. <laughs> oh, it's just on. rubbish, huh? Yeah, I don't. You know. Yeah. I don't even know why. I, I don't it, know what would, what what that was, at all. We All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, flip the script on you right now. Ooh, you see that? That's a that's a rap terminology. Um, I'm just gonna ask you some quick fire questions, Andy, because I think the viewers, and <laughs> the, 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 the listeners, would like to know a little bit more about you. Awesome. And you know, I'm gonna give you some easy questions, but you got to answer them inside of three seconds. Okay? Here we go. Noodles or rice? Rice. Spaghetti or pizza? Pizza. Cheeseburgers or hot dogs? Cheeseburger. Boys or girls? Girls. <laughs> Okay. What? It could be a <laughs> it could be a massive night. Nick, did, sorry, did you guys notice a pause in that answer compared to his first three answers? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sorry, but the, over here in the production room, we're just too busy pissing ourselves. <laughs> did you? Did was there a distinctive pause? Yeah, there was there, a reluctance to answer that question. There was, wasn't there? Can I explain myself? <laughs> no, it's alright. I like boys to go and play football with and hang out with and have beers with. I like girls for. I can't, you know what? Bo if boy is boys. Is my answer. Boys, boys. Oh, no, like that, man. Right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to play football with. Yeah. Uh, you're sweating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, what? why have I brought Dom Lau on the show? Why would I do that? Okay. Um... Right. Hey, why am I let it's my show? S hey, you want to ask me some questions? Sure. Get your own show. Okay. Go on then. I'll, I'll do a few more. Oh, did you, you want to do a few more then? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Um, thongs or G-strings? Thongs. Do you like to wear them, yes or no? No. 
Rice or noodles? But you've asked me that already. I want to see if you were lying before. Yeah, I, w- I was. I was just thinking of the first thing that came into my mind. Okay. Um, let's get a prediction for you from... Um, I enjoyed that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The, the rap. But we didn't actually get rapping, but I don't think that was the... That was well, the I don't thing. think that's the... I'm, I'm just... I'm spitball. I don't know. I'm, I'm just... I'm reaching here in the dark, but uh, I don't think that's what Red Card Sports Radio was, was really all about. But. No, but we'd like to get to know you, Dom, and thanks for coming on the show, and thanks for giving us an insight into... You know what what you're doing on TV and radio and how you've you know, won the sports personality of the year. Love that. Thank you. Um, Newcastle against West Ham coming up. Yes. Uh, Eleven o'clock. You going to watch that with away the lads? Uh, you know, if they're listening right now, which I know a lot of them are, because there are a lot of uh, fans of you and and the show here in Singapore, and a lot of the majorities. Um, so, guys, I am going to do my very very best to get down to the Penny Black at Boat Key to check out. Newcastle West Ham at 11 p.m. That's what time we kick off. And uh, the longer that I am kept here in the studio by Andy, the least li- the less likely I should say it is I'm going to make it down. But no, I'd like to go watch the game. It's go- it's, a- it's going to be a good game. We've got some new signings. We found a little bit more momentum. We're- Newcastle. The thing is, you know, Newcastle United are one of, if not the most consistently inconsistent teams in the Premier League. Um, it is such. Uh, it's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster being a Newcastle United supporter because one minute we're going, yeah, we, you know, we're challenging for the title. The next minute, no, we're going to get relegated. The next minute, oh yeah, now we're champ- challenging for Champions League spots. And no, now we actually got relegated, and then we got promoted, won some silverware, and it's just you know, losing all these one nil games. Our defense is poor, it's shoddy. But then the next thing you know, one of our defenders scores the late winner against Manchester United of all places, and. You know, I I don't know. But West Ham this weekend, yeah, or tonight rather, it's going to be good. I have a feeling we're going to – because we we have a little bit of an eternal bogeyman when we travel down to the capital. So, actually, no, what am I talking about? We're playing at home. My bad. My bad. So, uh, yeah, we're going to (laughs) lose. That's right. (laughs) No, no, no. We can edit this out for you. We're going to win. We're going to Yeah, we're going to – we're going to – my – Dom Lau's prediction is that Newcastle United are going to win. Draw. Lose. <laughs> yeah, you can edit that. Yeah, nice. As, you, as you see fit. Uh, I reckon three two, Newcastle United. Could be anything though, couldn't that? Do you know what, Andy? It could be. It could be anything. It could be anything. Could be a draw. Yeah. Could be a three two draw. Both teams might score the same amount of goals each, and it could be a draw. Yeah. Hey, just before we lo- lose you. And so, you know, that's not a metaphor. It's, you know, you're going to leave there. I was going to say, what, what's going to happen to me when I leave this room? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is there something in my water? Am I going to... Um, Nick, can you just give Nick, uh, Dom a few sort of radio voice, like, you know, the jingle bits to do? What? No, we, we might as well. You said you'd do it for free, so why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> why are you here? What am I doing? So can you Oops. give me that? You're listening to the... the you're listening to oh, in the, in the voice. Yeah. You're listening okay. to the best radio show in the world, the Andy Pender Show on Red Cut Sports Radio. But I can't say that. Why? My show is the best radio show in the uh, world. Oh, yeah. No, it's best sports radio show. I can, I can definitely do that for you. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. What now? Uh, yeah. Okay. You are listening to the best sports radio show in the world, the one and only Red Card Sports Radio with Andy Penders. Oh, different class. Yeah, I think people could write in. Right, you just come on every show, stand in the corner. Right? I I will do a, a little <laughs> jingle for or a little voiceover for you for a fee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. you got a T-shirt company that's going down the tubes. I will help you out with a new jingle. Come down to my new T-shirt store where you can get personalized shirts made every single day in any color, in any font, for any occasion. Call now. If you call now, we'll also throw in some shorts and a hat. Signed by Andy Penders. I don't know what I'm doing. It sounds so convincing, though, doesn't it? What else? What else? Let's do oh, yeah. While we're here, quick. Um, uh, oh, Andy Penders, what a legend. Andy Penders, what a legend. Andy Penders, the man, the myth, the legend. Andy Penders, cometh the hour, cometh the man, cometh the hero, cometh on your chest. <laughs> Oh, it's the top of the hour. Hey, Tom, thanks for coming on the show. It's the top of the hour on the end. No, no, I'm I'm done. Oh, we're done. (laughs) (laughs) I was just getting ready. I I was just warming up. Oh, dear. Red Card Radio. Sports Radio. Red Card Sports Radio. Because you know it. Red Card Sports Radio coming in your ears. 
Red Card Sports Radio coming in your ears. Red Card Sports Radio. We rock. Yeah, nice. I love it, man. You should think we about it. We can do five million keepy uppies. How many can you do? Thought so. Red Card Sports Radio with Andy Penders. <laughs> right, dead set. That's about $2,000 worth of work there. Oh, is it? Well, but no. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dom, whatever's in the pipeline for you next, the very best of luck. Good luck with Asia Pop 40. And Thank you very much, man. And we're looking forward to your YouTube channel coming up in 2016. I, You know what? I, I'm going to get off my, my lazy behind. Uh, and I know you as a friend have been telling me that for, for many, many months now. Years, I think, maybe even. So I, I will, will try and do that uh, as best as I can. But no, seriously, thanks to you and your team here at Red Card Sports Radio. It's been an absolute pleasure. You guys have been fantastic. And I'm a huge fan of your show and of you, Andy, as well. So all the very best of luck to you, bro. Let's get the very latest sports news now with Nicholas Lim. Uh, thanks, Andy. We start in football. Jordanian Prince and FIFA presidential candidate Prince Ali wants the partnership between the Asian and African football governing bodies examined. Prince Ali said he's unaware of the he's aware of the possibility of block voting, particularly after the Asian Football Confederation and Confederation of African Football signed a memorandum of un, a memorandum of understanding for the development of football in their regions. AFC President Sheikh, Sh- Sheikh Salman, who is likely to run against Prince Ali in the election, was a key part of the deal. Prince Ali expressed concern that there could be a breach in electoral rules and has written to the FIFA Electoral Committee to examine the issue. Elsewhere, PDRM coach Fauzi Pilus has revealed that new signing Safwan Baharudin will play as a box-to-box midfielder. The former Lions 12 star can play as an attacking midfielder and also anywhere across the back four. But Fauzi said he will deploy Safwan in a more dynamic position as the Malaysian side aim for silverware in the coming season. And finally, in golf, former world number one Rory McIlroy says he will return to action at the Honda Classic next month. The world number three has been out of action for over two months after undergoing laser eye surgery to improve his putting. McIlroy will be looking for a good performance at the Honda Classic as he attempts to close the gap on Jordan Spieth at the top of the world rankings. Enter a new generation of sports. Red Card Sports Radio. Still to come on Barclays Premier League Live. Tottenham Hotspur versus Sunderland from White Hart Lane. Has Tottenham come forward and Tottenham score the equalising goal through Steli Alley, who is the Spurs hero again. And he finishes it here and he plays it across and Jermaine Defoe completes his hat-trick. I think that they all are on the top, on the top ten, have the possibility to, to win the, the league. I think it's very open. You can guess in football, and it's a lot of game ahead still for play. And you know what can happen. Chelsea versus Everton from Stamford Bridge. Blues are making something count here. Decent ball across, and there's the opening goal of the game from Cesar Aspilicueta. Barclays into the area. Barclays goes the corner. Oh, they've done it! Everton have done it. It's down a fair. Going into the second half of the campaign, we can be consistent in our results, which you can imagine that all the good work that you do, playing well, gets uh, gets recognised and it gives you a real belief and a sense of, of confidence going into into the next game. So, important that we, we maintain the levels and, and we start really brightly against this Chelsea side. Aston Villa versus Leicester City from Villa Park. Here's the corner again from the left-hand side from Lescott with a header and it's been spilt and it's an opening goal for Aston Villa. Taken by Fuchs, it's an out swinger, it's a solid header into the net. Robert Hoot for Leicester City. Maybe sooner or later, Leicester slowed down, but it's normal. But since now it's fantastic and our fans are dreaming, okay? They must continue to dream, we must continue to work hard. That is a good uh, balance. And then, tomorrow, Liverpool versus Manchester United from Anfield. In towards Benteke, it's going to come down. Yes! yes! The level. It's Joe Allen! The substitute has done it! It's Memphis here for United. Shot block, Rooney! Way Rooney is back with a hellacious bang from the edge of the area. It's important for the table. We are close together, so um, both teams uh, need the points to, to to stay close with the top teams in, 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 the, in the table. And for this, it's important, but it's Man United. So that's how I understand derbies. I love derbies. Followed by Stoke City versus Arsenal from the Britannia Stadium. By Onaltovic, great cross from Onaltovic! And sliding in at the back post to finish 
is Jonathan Walters, who makes it three goals in four games. Turns it back into Campbell. Campbell tries to slip it through. Will it fall for Arsenal? It will! Olivier Giroud! They uh, can create, they can play, but it's a good challenge for us as well, because they have to uh, maintain our record and uh, we can show that we have uh, made big step forward and uh, can beat them. And, uh, it's an opportunity, of course, we want to take. That's all still to come on Barclays Premier League Live from Talk Sport. You're with Andy Penders on Red Card Sports Radio. Welcome back, everyone. It's the Andy Penner Show on Red Card Sports Radio. Just recovering from Dominic J. Lau in the house. Uh, enjoyed his company. It was good, right, Nick? Yeah, it was good fun. Is he still there? He is still standing over my shoulder. Hey, are you, if he's that good at Star Wars, right? Which I think he is. Can he hear me? You can hear me? Okay. All right, I'll ask you a few questions while you're there. Get, there there's your mic. I don't know why I can't just bring you back in the studio, but if you're hanging around, then I'll ask you a few questions, right? Before every Star Wars movie begins, George Lucas generously provides a short pro prologue to update viewers of events in the Star Wars galaxy. Who is the only main character mentioned in the rolling prologue that precedes the events of the original Star Wars film? Darth Vader. No, Princess, Princess Leia. Leia. Yeah. <laughs> the opening sequence of the original Star Wars film features a riveting battle between an Imperial Star Destroyer and a small freighter carrying Princess Leia. Aboard this freighter are R2-D2 and C-3PO. When we first see these two droids, who is accompanying them? The other droid that looks like C-3PO. The other droid? And what happened to him? Well, it was actually a her. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the first character to utter any kind of speech in the original Star Wars? C-3PO. Yeah, what did he say? Did you hear that? Yeah. And what did R2-D2 say? <laughs> Which it roughly translates to? Yes, I did. Princess Leia tried to throw off her Imperial captors by telling them where the rebel base was located. What system did she send them off to investigate? Dantooine. Never shown in the movie, was it? It wasn't, until it got blown up. <laughs> CP3O, no, his, no, his brother, C3PO, had the penchant for name-calling when it came to conversations with his little buddy R2-D2. During an argument just preceding their breakup after landing on Tatooine, mm -hmm. C3PO refers to R2-D2 by which cruel phrase? You'll be deactivated in a week, you miss something, scrap pile. Go that way. Something like that. Yeah. Something, something, scrap pile. Nearsighted scrap power. Yeah, yeah. What was Order 66? Um, for all the uh, clone droids to uh, basically turn to the Imperial dark side and uh, kill all the good guys. Yeah, the command was issued by Darth... No, S Senator Palpatine. Darth Sidious and Mark, the end of the Clone Wars. Darth Sidious, yes. Name the name of the droid that accompanies Obi Wan to Kamino. R two D four. Was it R five D four, R four P seventeen? R five D four. No. R two Q five or T C three. T C three. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hey, good knowledge though, Dom. Now I'm not. I'm not sure. I just uh, your your producer here is going. Why is Why is Dom sitting at my desk and talking <laughs> to Andy when there should be other things that they be, you know should be talking about? Yeah, it's true. All right, I could see it, Dom. Now, thanks for coming on the show. All right, who says this in Star Wars? No, I am your father. Because that is one of the most famous lines in, in movies. Yeah, history. but also one it of should the, have been on your quiz. Everyone's got it wrong. Everybody thinks it's Luke. I'm your father. But he doesn't say that, does he? No, he says no. He says I'm, no. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the most misconstrued lines ever. You're right, it is. I think you should just focus focus this way. Look, just, you know, 
and uh, you know, sports, man, sports. Yeah, sports. Anyway, thank you so much for having me, dude. Thank you very much. Indeed. I'm gonna go ahead down and watch the Newcastle West Ham game. On the way, Antonio Corinach. Not, not before I tell you how you can win a brand new smoking Samsung phone, courtesy of Samsung Sports Low. It's the Big Red Card Sports Radio Challenge, brought to you by Samsung Sports Low. We want your best football chant. The best one we've got is Issa Halim to the tune of Dexy's Miss Midnight Runners. Um, come, on, come on, Eileen, that's the song. Um, get involved, go to the Samsung Sports Low app and go to our channel. You can uh, get yourself involved there. On the line now is our Spanish football expert, Antonio Corinac. Hi, Antonio. Andy, Happy New Year. How are you? Yeah, Happy New Year to you, man. How do you say that in Spanish? Uh, Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Navidad. That's that's Merry Christmas, but uh, for Happy New Year, we we should be saying uh, Feliz Año Nuevo. Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. Okay. Uh, more or less. Not yeah, bad. Not bad. I'm still uh, learning, bro. Hey, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, both being banned from registering new signings for the next two transfer windows after uh, being found to have breached rules on the international transfer and registration of players aged under 18. How much of a shock is this? Well, I mean, it's the it's the hottest topic uh, right now in Spain. I mean, I've been following a little bit the, the media. I was there the first week of uh, January in Barcelona, enjoying family and and friends. And uh, to be honest, it was pretty much a uh, you know quite a big rumor going on. Everybody was sort of expecting, but I guess you know uh, Real Madrid and Atletico, you know, they are playing the role of of being a little bit surprised, even though. As I mentioned, uh, there has been some rum. I mean, some rumors since, if I'm not mistaken, April last year that the you know the same uh, issues that Barcelona was was having uh, with with FIFA, Real Madrid and Atletico uh, were going to face them. And yes, we are talking about mainly all the under 18. But I, we we can say a little bit more specific. It goes more or less from 12 to I would say 17. That's where FIFA is having some issues when. The two big teams, actually the three big teams in Spain, uh, have been signing, you know, players, and they are quite worried about first of all the process of all the registration. Also, if really families are moving with the kids to to either Barcelona or, or Madrid as a as a big effort to make sure that the that the kid plays in the in the young teams. But but I don't know. I mean, for me, the biggest surprise comes that. You know, clubs like Barcelona, uh, Real Madrid, Atletico, they should have, you know, all these processes in place. And then another thing that for me is quite surprising is we know, for example, Arsenal way of, of you know, dealing with, with, younger, with youngsters. We know Chelsea, we know Man U as well. How come there has not been any issues in the, in the Premier League and all the issues have been in, 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 in Spain with Barcelona covering, I mean, already over the period. And now Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, which seems that they are going to be, you know, blocked from signing and registering any player in the window market of the summer as well as next January uh, 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So can we just be sp specific? I, I don't really understand what they what they they're in breach of. Well, FIFA mentioned three main issues. One is the way the kids are registered, yeah? If all the information and all the paperwork is in place. Second, FIFA is worried about if families are relocating because of the kids, you know, being signed up by, uh, by, by the team. And the third one is, is more related to the legal component of, of the contracts. I mean, uh, after listening to, to some media, radio station in, in Spain. I mean, Real Madrid has been saying, and Atletico Madrid has been saying that, what do you want me to do if I have a Colombian 15-year-old whose parents moved to Spain, they live in Madrid, and they bring the kid to the Atletico de Madrid or Real Madrid the School of Football, they pay whatever, 800, 900 euros a month, and they say, I want my kid to play in Atletico Madrid or Real Madrid. I mean, there is, th there is nothing much the clubs can do. The main concern is that I think there are some issues with FIFA regulations compared with the Spanish uh, La Liga uh, Federation regulation. So it's pretty much something that is, that is not balanced. And what is working in Spain, FIFA doesn't see it with the right eyes. And that's why they are uh, bringing these this issues uh, quite out loud. Also, let me, let me add something else. Um, 
Real Madrid is, I mean, 100, 100% confirmed that this is a mistake, that this is not going to happen, that there has been some, you know, legal issue some, uh, from FIFA, not perhaps not uh, supervising all the documents that, you know, they've been receiving from Real Madrid. And they are pretty much uh, confirmed that they are going to squeeze all the uh, resources possible in terms of, of, of legal, and they are going to present uh, means, and uh, they believe that at least for the uh, summer winter, uh, no, sorry, summer window, they should be able to sign some players. So, I don't know, it's a little bit confusing, especially because it, it, it seems that it's only happening in Spain. Uh, Arsene Wenger was speaking ahead of his side's game today, saying that it, it will be overturned. He's just confident well, it will uh, be. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, look what happened with, with Barcelona. Yeah, They got you know, a little bit of like a margin in 2014, so that's why they could sign Suarez, Rakitic, and so on. But then, of course, they, they, they signed uh, Arda Turan and Alex Vidal, and they were not able to register them until, you know, just a couple of uh, weeks ago, no, actually a week ago, and they only just played the first game um, last week. So, I mean, as I mentioned, yeah, Real, I mean, both, both clubs, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid, they are convinced they are going to do everything in their hands for this decision to be turned around, but uh, you never know. Sometimes FIFA has been in place for so long, their rules seem a little bit unbreakable, and, uh, you know, when they show this level of, of stubbornness, uh, for me, it looks, at, it looks complicated that if Barcelona has been through uh, for a year in this uh, scenario, it, it, it looks hard for me to understand that now Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, they will be able to, to turn back the, the decision. I'm not sure about... What uh, it means is, though, Antonio, what it means is that um, they're both going to... Look, if you're either Real or Atletico, you need to stockpile some talent now. And that's bad news for the Premier League clubs. You've got a lot of clubs on a high alert now because Harry Kane, Eden Hazard, John Stones and David De Gea, real possible char targets for Real Madrid because they've got to make up for two transfer windows that they might possibly not be active in. Absolutely. But, but also, let me, let me say something. For a club like, you know, I think Atletico Madrid has been fine with like you know they, they FIFA found something close to 154 cases of you know uh, issues in terms of the registration and, and what we mentioned before for Real Madrid were close to 30 plus but anyway I'm thinking that perhaps for Real Madrid I'm not sure about Atletico but maybe for Real Madrid I'm not gonna say it's gonna be a good decision yeah uh, but they have a few good players on loan, and I can think about Marco Asensio from, from Espanyol, that they might want him back next year, and of course he can go back. Maybe it's an opportunity to Real Madrid to avoid doing what they've been doing for the past 10-15 years, which is to sign huge players and open a little bit the chance to, you know, play with or being forced to play with, with national uh, players and, you know, with, with players that they are a little bit more aware about the club, the history. Yeah. I want to see how Zidane is going to do at, at, at the bench. Has it been a different I, I um, Real Madrid? In a positive way. Has it been a different Real Madrid now that Zidane has... Um, well, I, I'm not that sure, Andy, to be honest. I uh, thought I the mean, style uh, of play was, supposed to, was, was a lot different. Sorry? I thought the style of play was very different. True, true, but you know, what is the experience of, of Zinedine? I mean, true, he was an amazing player, but you know, experience in a you know, in a in a changing room like that. Perhaps it's a, you know, I just read a couple of hours ago that he would like to use a little bit uh, to use a little bit of that, you know, Ancelotti formula, trying to be, you know, close with the players, which we all know that Benitez has never been close to 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 some players, and that most probably that was that was the issue. And you know, there is a quite a you know hot formula in Real Madrid, which is you know Florentino Perez with his powerful decision uh, decision making, and uh, as well as as the players that seem to rule the, the changing room, you just need to bring somebody that you know is able to manage the those players, you know, become close to them and try to find the boss, the, the best formula. But 
I don't know. For me, it's a big question mark. Sit down and, and let's see what happens. Big games. Um, well, always big games. I, I, I use the word big games just to get myself into talking about the games. I don't know if they're necessarily big, but Sevilla against Malaga, Celta Vigo against Levante, Villarreal against Betis, and Real Sociedad against Deportivo. Your fair tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Barcelona plays Athletic de Bilbao, which yep. they are going to face each other also in the Copa del Rey. We, Espanol, are playing Getafe away, our second game yeah. uh, Yeah, so away. tomorrow's I mean, match, Las, Las Palmas against Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid exactly. against Deportivo. Exactly. That is a, that is a you know, it's, it's, it might not be a huge game, the Real Madrid versus Deportivo, especially after Deportivo being knocked out from from Copa del Rey, but I think it should be quite okay for the for the teams on top of the table. I would like to see what's going to happen with this decision uh, from FIFA. It's going to it's going to really affect the players of Atletico Madrid playing at Las Palmas away. Um, I don't know. I think they will they will get the three points, but uh, it should be with not. I hope there are not too many surprises. Um, perhaps maybe Espanol we can we can grab one point of the three at at Getafe. That would be fantastic. Antonio, good to speak to you. Fantastic, Andy. Take care. Take care. Antonio Cordonac, our Spanish football expert. Uh, let's go more domestic football now as we talk about the S League. It's the most exciting season yet. I'm proud to say that I was watching Geylang International's friendly victory 9 0 yesterday at the Jalan Besar Stadium. Got to see the boys up close and personal. They had a new coach as well in, in Hasnery. It means that they've had to let go of a coach, and that particular coach is Jörg Steinbrenner, who joins us on the line now. Hi, Jörg. Hi Andy, how are you? Yeah, excellent. Uh, how's life at Warriors FC? So far, so good, Andy. Not too bad. Um, good environment, good club. So far, things going pretty okay, Andy. Uh, as we said, it was um, a very difficult pre-season for him. What with the number of new players that they had arriving, the disruptions that they had in terms of being able to train. Has your pre-season been smooth sailing, or has it been uh, uh, up and down? No, it has been. Uh, I think we. Uh, I share a little bit hustle in, in one sense because we only kept about five players from last year's squad. You know, from the two zero one five squad of Warriors. So we brought roughly uh, fifteen players in. But I think um, so far the the cohesion of the team, the players uh, generally know each other. I mean, some of the players like uh, Shaiful Esra, Sulfatli. You know, they are former Warriors players. They are coming back. You know, so far, I think over the last two weeks, um, we did well in uh, getting the players together. You know, we had a lot of programs together. So far, I'm quite happy about that. And you just played a friendly tonight? Yeah, we just played the uh, police uh, SA NFL team. Uh, we won 5 nil. So um, it was actually a good run out because the last two weeks, um, we did a lot on the physical side. We... Uh, had our 2.4 kilometer test, uh, FAS test yesterday morning. Everyone passed? The boys did. Yeah, 17 out of 19 boys. Ain't no so bad. That's not too bad. Yeah. Are you and allowed to reveal the two that didn't make it? Yeah. So, and today we had the game. Um, so we played two teams each half. So it was a good run out for the boys. Have you got any more spaces left, Jorg, in your roster? Yeah, we have uh, still two more places uh, left. I mean, it looks like... Um, uh, Fasli Chaffa, former Warriors, last year Haugang. You know, the left winger might gonna, gonna be an option on the left side as well. Um, we're just looking at one Croatian boy, 19 years old for the Prime League. So, um, that would be then actually the three plus one, our fourth foreigner, and, uh, Mustakim Mansur. So these are the three boys we are in the moment looking at it, and, uh, there's a good chance we're gonna sign them. Excellent. Good to know. Thanks for telling us that. It looks to be a very exciting season on the horizon. There certainly is a lot of excitement amongst all of the Singapore football fans that I've spoken to this year. Jörg, do you and the players get a sense of excitement more than any other season this season? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Andy, I watched the game uh, Haugang against uh, Tambanese, you know, at the Chalam Bazaar. Yep. And I think what is, what is happening is, um, and I think a lot of people have said that before, you know, once once your national players, uh, Lions 12 players, going to get back into the into the league, it should create some excitement, isn't it? I mean, they are on local talent have. Now they are back into into the S League, and obviously, you know, all the people who 
possibly before have watched uh, the Lions 12 playing playing at the Chalam Bazaar now going to possibly follow their favorite players. And I mean, it was a great excitement to see such a turnout in a friendly game, Haugang against Tembenis. And you can see a buzz about the league. And I, and, uh, I think, you know, when, when the league going to kick off and, and uh, the, the game's going to be good, the game's going to be tight, the game's going to be competitive, I think we're definitely going to see, first of all, a good season, you know, and secondly, more people uh, coming back into the stadiums. Have you approached your chairman to ask him to sign a player of such stature as uh, Jermaine Pennant? To be very frank, I'm always very careful, um, um, Andy, with, with such things. I mean, when I was in Indonesia, Mitra Kuka signed Marcus Bent. I think uh, you're, you're familiar with Marcus yeah, Bent. Yeah, you know, yeah, He was playing in Mitra Kuka. Yeah. You know, he was also on big money. He lasted for three to four months because, you know, um, you could see on certain games, he got frustrated um, with the players around him. You know, that the supporters got frustrated with him. Um, I hope not that the same going to happen uh, to Jermaine Tennant, you know, um, but I'm always careful because, you know, if a player on, on that level definitely goes into a league what is below uh, what he has used to play, you know, it, it takes a lot of adaptation, isn't it? You know, and, and for him also possibly, you know, um, not getting onto a level where he gets frustrated because maybe the players around him are not on the same um football level, same quickness in thinking in certain areas, you know, um, otherwise it would, it, it, it's good for the league. I mean, you know, possibly half of the people who was in the, in the Chalam Bazaar Stadium that they came because of him. Um, I wish him that, and for the league, that it, it's going to be good. But for me personally, I'm careful because I have seen it going the other round uh, with Marcus Bend in Mitra Kuka. And uh, we don't wish the same thing to happen, you know. Yeah, it's certainly very positive for the league. It's gonna... Hey, I, I was at Galen yesterday, um, Jörg, and um, it, it struck me that it was a very a very uh, friendly club. Do you miss Galen? I mean, Galen, uh, we had two good years. You know, to be, uh, to be very frank, you know, we, uh, we still have some, uh, some good ties with the ex-general uh, manager, you know, and um, Hasrin and all the guys. I mean, Geylang has always been, uh, I would say, a um, familiar club, you know, even the two years it was very, even the chairman was very much involved. I mean, uh, I know some of the people uh, like Bambang from my time in, uh, in UAE when I worked for Menu. So, um, but I haven't had the chance to meet them since I'm back. I only met Hasrin. But... You know, um, if you talk about Geelong, I think they're also a force to be reckoned this year. Well, it's going to be such a tight competition this year, Jörg. I, can't, I, I wouldn't know where to put my money. I guess you'd have to go Tampanese. I don't know about Brunei. I don't know about Albrecht because I, I don't know what they've done. But Geelong strengthened. Warriors looking good. Haugang have strengthened. Ballester have strengthened. Everybody's strengthened, bro. It's weird. Yeah, everyone uh, Everyone has, uh, has strengthened the teams. I mean... Um, definitely, if you if you look at at the, the roster what Tampani says, you know you would say the, the smart money is on them, you know to to win the league. But it's also the pressure, you know. I mean, it's a little bit uh, the same like last year. You know, they they had a very good squad last year. Um, they didn't really had the, had the best start at the, at the season. Then they were always trying to catch up. The pressure is mounting, you know, and then. Um, um, We'll be we we'll see how the team gonna chill this year. I mean, could be better because you have quite a number of lines. Twelve players they uh, used to play together, you know. Then uh, um, some experienced players came in, but definitely uh, I would say Tampines is the team to beat. But you know, having said that, I mean, uh, so far Bruna every year for the last two years, Steve has always put a good team together. I know he kept Ramazzotti, you know, up front. He's always a handful. Um, Home United has some uh, some good additions. Um, Geylang, like you said, then Elberex always a surprise. I mean, with one thing, you are you are hundred percent sure, and it's uh, it's going to be a very competitive season, and and, and it's good for the league. Excellent. And I think last year, yeah, last year we had a season already where you generally didn't know uh, um, how the game's going to end up. I mean, when you looked in the first ten games, I think. In the first 10 games, uh, DPMM lost three games. 
Warriors lost three games that that never happened in the last few years before. And I think this year it's going to be competitive. Um, uh, all the teams, Haugang, you know, sign some good good players. So uh, and it's good for the league. Uh, Jörg, um, do send some of your players onto my show. It'd be nice to get to know some of your star players and we have a good chat with them. Best of luck with the rest of preseason and uh, hopefully we'll talk soon. Sounds good, Andy. Have a good evening. Uh, Jörg yeah? Steinbrenner. Yeah, okay. thanks, Jörg. Uh, the co-coach of the of Warriors FC, um, one of the more experienced managers in Singapore. Talking of being an experienced manager, I'm sure all of you at home have been playing football manager at some point in your life, whether it was championship manager or football manager but we all know it's a sports interactive game that's probably run by Sega now I don't know um, I've got this year's edition and I need some hints and tips so why not speak to a, a man who knows a thing or two about it it's Kai Zan hi Kai hi hi Andy how are you yeah very good thanks buddy look you, you're the most busiest man in domestic local football what just <laughs> t- tell me what's been going on in your life recently uh, recently um, last week I had a seven aside football tournament Organized by AK Shebris in uh, Yishun. And then uh, we are doing selection for our Warwick Knights football club. We, uh, we are playing in the 2016 FAS Island White League again. So uh, that's pretty much it. Well, and what did, what did you post up the other day? You had some tables or something. What was that? You put some tables up with a whiteboard and... Yeah. Oh, that was the, the Sabotio, the Sabotio tournament Amazing. that we had yesterday. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, good to speak to you, Kai. Um, I often see on Facebook that you would post up a picture or two of your football manager screen. If you had uh, t- the top five tips for this year's football manager, yeah. what would they be? Number one. Top five tips, let's see. Um, get a team which is uh, interesting and which can win championships. <laughs> uh, that, would be, that would be good. Uh, if not, if, if you want to play something of a lower team that you, you think that you can bring them up to the Champions League, they'll be fine as well. Okay, and um, um, are there any tactics that you should... Okay, what about Wonder Kids? Are there any Wonder Kids that, that, that should be involved that you should sign straight away? Uh, Wonder Kids, Wonder Kids... Uh, yeah, there's a few, but um, they're still developing. So um, first season, usually, they don't really shine. So until the second and third, like... Uh, I'm actually managing Liverpool right now, and uh, Divock Origi just came back from uh, loan at Newcastle, apparently. And, and he's doing quite well. He's taking over uh, Balotelli for scoring a lot of goals, and uh, even Dennis Farage kind of get into the team. <laughs> so that's what's happening for my Liverpool team, actually. OK, bro. Well, I can just tell you, I did win um, the Champions League with Southampton in the second season after qualifying for the Champions League. Um, oh, I really wonder who do you buy? <laughs> um, do you know what? I think the first season you don't buy anybody, right? Like keep your budget. Like I think that because if you get your training done early, your team needs to to mould and get to know the system that you're playing. I actually downloaded the tactic called Darren's devastating four one three two, oh, which right. I used to devastating effect. Got my assistant manager to do everything, <laughs> from yeah. team talks to training to every everything. And all I did was press play, the continue button, and 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 show. But I did sign Brill and Bolo oh, from uh, yes. Swiss side uh, Basel. Ah uh, yes, yes, sir. I have Brill and Bolo in my team as well. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. He's a good player. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> all right. So what next for work? Now I heard you beat the the Geelong Prime League side the other day. Ah uh, yes, um, we we had a few trial players coming in, and uh, we were trying to sort out the team. Uh, we asked Geelang Prime League to play three, three, three what do you call it, three halves, uh, just to try out, th- try them out, and then uh, Geelang agreed because they have a few players who are on trial as well, uh, and we came up on top, three 0 win. Wow. Yep, and uh, we're quite happy with the, the the lot that we had on that day. So next up will be next Thursday, while weeknights we'll be playing the British club. Ooh. There will be a 9 p.m. kickoff on the 21st of January on Thursday. Uh, we will play at the Rainforest Hub. Best of luck to you, Kai. Good to speak to you. Thank you so much, Andy. That's Kai Zana, who's uh, head of Warwick Knights and a uh, very busy man on the uh, local domestic league. Uh, next up, let's get to a man who's uh, busy on the football pitch, but a smaller version. It's Anas bin Rahamat. Hi, Anas. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Well, that's good to hear. How's things, bro? 
Yes, yeah, I think I agree. Good to hear. Okay, right, I want to talk to Butio because um, you're only 21 years of age, but you're very much into the game. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm 21. Actually, I'm 22 this year. Okay, that's good. That com- okay, that comes after 21, right? That's good. So, and yeah. you're in the world, in the world, you live in Singapore, but in the world, you are ranked 178th, is that right? Uh, yes, correct. Uh, yes. How has this come about? Uh, the 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 ranking, the world ranking is based on points. So every time you play in a uh, in a tournament, you you get points uh, based on your uh, your position in the tournament. If you get champion, you get more points, and if you get into the quarterfinals, you get less points. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay, now I understand how rank world rankings work. Which is useful because I want to know how you got into the game of Sibutio and when was your last tournament ranking uh, competition? Oh, uh, I I started uh, at the end of 2012. Yeah, and uh, from from there I I I participate in almost all of the tournaments. Yes. Why are you not playing FIFA 16 on the Xbox, bro? Sorry. Why are you not playing FIFA 16 on the Xbox like every other kid? Oh, because uh, I I find that uh, I, f- I find the uh, like Xbox or PS3 uh, the the cons- the they are very addictive, and uh, I I find that uh, they are not good for your eyes, not good for your for your well being. Yeah, if you That's it, kid, kids. Them. There's a good advice from uh, Anas there. PS3 and Xbox is not good for your eyes and it's not good for your well-being. Get off your computers, get off your video consoles, and go and play some Subutio. Why should people be playing <laughs> Subutio, Anas? Yeah, uh, because um, besides uh, besides the fun, uh, it also uh, creates uh, good uh, relationships uh, with uh, with your friends. And also family members because uh, table football, I find it uh, I find it as a good way to bond uh, like father, father and son, between brothers. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nicely put, bro. I hear that you're the second best player in the Jurong Central Subutio Club. Uh, uh yes. Uh, based based on the league uh, last year, uh, last year we had a, a league for the whole year. Yeah, and I and I came in second based on the points. Yeah. And who, who's the guy that keeps on beating you? Uh, it's Rudy, Rudy, of course. Well, we had Rudy on the show last week, and he he's very, uh, yes. he's very proud to say that he's the number one, number one <laughs> in Singapore. And have you had the chance to beat him recently? Yes. Uh, most of the time, I I lose to him, but on certain certain occasions uh, where I'm I'm lucky enough, yeah, I I can manage to to beat him. On uh, on a few occasions. Okay, and when was the, when was the last time you beat him? Okay, uh, the last time was uh, yesterday when. Oh um, come on, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, when we had the tournament, Waspa tournament. Uh, it was the first. Uh, it was the first league session of the year. Did, and, after you beat uh, him, after you, what was the score? Uh, it was just uh, one zero. No, so tight. Yeah. Yes, uh, it was a very tense match where, uh, in the final. Uh, I, I, he he dominated most of the match, but I I managed to get a good counter attack and managed to score a lucky goal. How how do you counter attack in Sibutio? Is is he like he's at the wrong okay. end of the table and you're at the other end of the table, moving a lot quicker? Okay, uh, basically, uh, to counter attack quickly is to, uh, okay. Firstly, you you need some of your uh, figures at the near the shooting area, yeah. and what you basically do is you flick the ball from your end, uh. try to aim to your striker, aim the ball to your to your striking uh, figure, and from there you you try to dribble dribble your striking figure into, uh, and and try to go for a goal. And what, it was a good goal. Was that sort of top right hand corner? That's how I'm envisaging it. Uh, yes, uh, that, that's what they say. I, I didn't really get a good 
good view of the goal right here. Yeah, sweet. And after the game, please tell me, uh, Anas, please tell me you did this, right? Because you got Rudy here, who's the self-proclaimed Singapore king of Sabutia. Tell me that after the, your, the game with him, you went up to him and said, Rudy, in your face. Okay. I hope that you went up to him afterwards and said, Rudy, I'm just taking you down, man. <laughs> Uh, I, or did I'm you go out to him and go, Rudy? You go out to him, Rudy. Have some of that, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what did you say I, to him? Sorry. What, what did you say to him? Oh, I, 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 there wasn't much words because I, I was quite surprised that that I won. I was quite speechless. Okay. Yeah, next but, time you beat him. Next time you beat yeah, him. Yeah. So you can say, I want you to say to him, Andy said that I had to say this to you, okay? I want you to go, I want you to go, Rudy, kiss my, no, I can't say that, Rudy, <laughs> have some of that, man, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, I, I, I say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's best of luck. Are you heading to Sydney soon, are you? Sorry? Uh, you're heading to Sydney soon? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm heading uh, to Sydney together with Rudy and uh, some other uh, 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 club members and also uh, from the other club in Singapore, which is the SD Lions. Okay, no yeah. fighting though, okay? Uh, yeah, there, there will be rivalry, but <laughs> yeah, we, we, we try our best not to fight. Uh, and that's good to speak to you. Best of luck. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for having me here. You're welcome. And that's Ben Rahmat, the Singapore number seven. Nick Lim, the world number 178. Something special, huh? It's it's crazy that we have world ranked Sabutio players in, in <laughs> yeah, our small yeah, island. I mean, it's just it's just <laughs> it's 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 a game that has more or less kind of gone out of fashion, I would say, among kids. And yet, we have world ranked players in this country. Something to be proud of, Nick Lim. It is something to be proud of. Something I should take up, actually. I should probably get a set. But, uh, You're not going to though, are you? I can't because I have a one-year-old and it's a choking hazard, so I can't <laughs> get one right now. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I was trying to get Steve McBain on the line because he's in Australia, right? But it's just not going through. It's just a bit Yeah, Steve's currently at uh, the Perth Scorchers Melbourne Knights match at the Wacker, which is a beautiful stadium. Okay, well, let's get, why don't we do the latest sports news, Nick? Um, and then we'll, get, we'll tell everybody how we can give them a chance to win a brand new Samsung smartphone. All right, uh, we start in football. Jordanian prince and FIFA presidential candidate Prince Ali wants the partnership between the Asian and African football governing bodies examined. Prince Ali said he's aware of the possibility of block voting, particularly after the Asian Football Confederation and Confederation of African Football signed a memorandum of understanding for the development of football in their regions. AFC President Sheikh Salman, who is likely to run against Prince Ali in the election, was a key part of the deal. Prince Ali expressed concern that there could be a breach in electoral rules and has written to the FIFA Electoral Committee to, to examine the issue. Elsewhere, PDRM coach Fauzi Pilus has revealed that new signing Safwan Baharudin will play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. The former Lions 12 star can play as an attacking midfielder and also anywhere across the back four. But Fauzi said he will deploy Safwan in a more dynamic position as the Malaysian side aim for silverware in the coming season. And finally, in golf, former world number one Rory McIlroy says he will return to action at the Honda Classic next month. The world number three has been out of action for over two months after undergoing laser eye surgery to improve his putting. McIlroy will be looking for a good performance at the Honda Classic as he attempts to close the gap on Jordan speed at the top of the world rankings. It'd be good if you la actually laser eye surgery, Nick, as a golfer, actually meant that laser eyes, you could actually, like Tiger Woods on the Xbox, Tiger, you know, Tiger Woods 15, you get the zzzz, so you can see everything on the, on the green, like when you're doing the pattern. I wonder though, is it, is it cheating though? I mean, you're correcting your eyesight, right? Would that be... Wait, what do you mean? No, it would be like if, 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 if a football player got some kind of enhancements and it's not oh, him, yeah, right? Oh, a whole world of... It Nonsense. changes everything, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, what if he got like an extra springy bit of spring in his arm so that he could do a whippy whippy swing faster than anybody's seen it before? Yeah, right. It's a great area, isn't it? 
Not really, Nick. <laughs> He's wearing, wearing glasses or not wearing glasses. Well, you can wear contacts. People wear contacts all the time. Like going for surgery. Interesting. <laughs> You're saying that... Because he's, he's enhancing his body, is what I'm saying. No, is, so he's mending he... his body. What? He's mending it. Are you saying people with glasses are damaged? Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, are they not? Well, sure. yeah. well, I don't know. It's just... It's just, isn't it, it's, it's just like, I thought it, it's like a clouding of the... The the rat the, the thing isn't it and then they just zap zap away all the nonsense bits. Yeah, well, and I don't know. When I first saw the piece of news, I thought, well, isn't that akin to like? I don't. I'm not saying everyone who's got glasses is damaged. I'm saying perhaps that their focal thing things are. Well, to each his own. Anyway. We have a Samsung smartphone to give away. We do, and that's courtesy of um, Samsung Sports Flow. It's the Big Red Card Sports Radio Football Challenge. Brought to you by Samsung Sports Flow. We are giving away a phone a month until the end of the Premier League season. Awesome, right? Um, all you have to do is really simple, and but actually next month will be a lot easier. Uh, go to Samsung uh, Sports Flow. Go to our channel. And what we want to hear from you is, what's your best football chant? Now, it can be short or long, but once you leave it there in the chat, we'll give you a call back, and uh, we'll get you to do it live on the show. And then you win a phone. What's it, a Note 5 now, Nick, is it? Well, it'll be the latest on the market. Yeah, the latest sure. one. We'll get Intel and Protect to go and, to go and get it. Sweet, right? Uh, get involved. That's the Big Red Card Sports Radio Football Challenge brought to you by Samsung Sports Low. The January Chancellor window is wide open, wafting like a window. Let's get the very latest from Nicholas Lim. Uh, thanks, Andy. We start with Manchester United, and they've been linked with a move for Real Madrid playmaker James Rodriguez. The Colombian has struggled for playing time at the Bernabeu and could be on his way out as new boss Zinedine Zidane looks to reshuffle his squad. The Sun claims the protracted transfer is gaining momentum, although United will need to shell out more than £60 million, pounds, the, more than the £60 million they paid for Angel Di Maria, if they want to land Rodriguez. Elsewhere, Liverpool are reportedly trying to solve their team's lack of pace by signing La Liga's fastest player. Athletic Bilbao's Inaki Williams is on Jurgen Klopp's radar after the Spanish inter under-21 international netted 10 goals in 21 games. Reports suggest Liverpool could activate Williams' buyout clause, which stands at about £15 million. Up next, tracking the movements of one Emmanuel Adebayor, the Togolese has been a free agent since leaving Tottenham and has now been linked with Watford and Crystal Palace. How these two sides are going to meet its astronomical wage requirements is anyone's guess. And finally, Aston Villa defender Jolien Lescott is the subject of a £3 million bid from MLS side LA Galaxy. Lescott has made 15 appearances this season and most recently scored the winner against Crystal Palace. Galaxy are reportedly willing to offer the player a three-year deal. Also in the news, Steve McBain on the, on the line. <laughs> Steve McBain joins us from uh, one of the, the best grounds that I've been to in a while, just because of its proximity to town and just the, the, the fair that's on offer there. He's at the Wacker in Perth. Hi, Steve. Hey, guys. How are you? So, so it's a little bit hard to hear you, but yes, I am here at the Wacker. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm a lot more sober than you. <laughs> well, to be honest, mate, um... Probably a lot more sober than the uh, the Perth score at the moment. It's six down for about fifty runs, um, and the problem is for them they they, they need to actually compete with the Melbourne Stars to make sure they get a home semi final. So uh, it's actually a, it's, it's turned from a, a pretty mundane game into a really really uh, captivating game. And it's a, a fantastic ground there. Mate, it is for me. It's the home of cricket. It's the first the first Test match I ever went to. Was, I think 2000, 2002. Uh, the, you know, one of the Ashes Tests, and yeah, it, it is a wonderful ground. They've, they've made absolutely no investment down here. It's absolutely dreadful. So uh, you know, my good friend is one uh, of the members down here, and it's it, it just it's, it's, it's so much atmosphere, and uh, it, it's a wonderful place to watch. And uh, how long to go? How long left in this match, overs wise? Well, we are um, we are uh, we're ten and a half overs in. Uh, the uh, the Scorchers are fifty one uh, fifty one for six. They chase about one hundred uh, and forty five. They're not looking too good, I have to say. Uh, Melbourne have dug in. They bowl pretty well. Uh, this is the same wicket that they uh, that they used for the the Australia uh, ODI on Wednesday. So uh, I don't think there's any real demons in the pitch, but uh, it's, it's, it's really tough to 
just a word before you go because the line's not as good as it could, could be um just how are relegation strugglers chelsea going to gilm against everton today <laughs> well um yeah um it, it could be better i think that you know we, we i mean i saw chelsea a lot over uh, over christmas um and the fact that they've got four points at home to West Brom and Watford is, is, is pretty average. I, I, you know, I, I fancy Everton today, I have to say, Andy. I, I hate to relive, but yeah, I fancy Everton today. I, I can't believe you're saying that. Hey, Steve, good to speak to you. I can't wait for you to come back on the show. I'm looking forward to your column this coming Monday on Red Card Sports Radio. Yeah, I hope you catch you guys next week. Cheers, Andy. Uh, Steve Bain reporting from the Wacker. It's good to have live sport on the Andy Pender Show here on Red Card Sports Radio. Hope you're enjoying the coverage of um, uh, what we're trying to do for the S League. Nick, I think we're doing. We think we're doing a good job so far. Yeah, I think um, most most people, are just, most of the other media, are kind of just kind of waiting for things to happen. But we're going out there. And we're we're making things happen. Making I mean, things we're happen. Making th- we're not just. We're not just looking for things. We're looking for the information when they happen. We're making things happen. So. Making things happen. Yeah. I love it. And uh, that means more and more coverage by the media. Um, but to be fair, you know, the likes of Vox Sports have gone in 442, very active. I know they got, they'll be doing a lot of work with the S League next season. We're lucky enough to Singap- in Singapore to have um, lots of conventions here. Uh, recently, there was a Sports Matters. And talking of um, football personalities and sports uh, presenting personalities, I was lucky enough to catch up with one of my earlier colleagues in the broadcasting game, the, wa- the, wa- the only, the one the great David Bashir, and he gave me five minutes of his time. So I'm with David Bashir. Hi, Dave. Andy, how are you going? Yeah, good. Uh, do you want to just give us a bit of background as, as to your career? Oh, it started with the ABC way back in the late 80s. ABC being the BBC equivalent in Australia. Uh, sports broadcasting to start off with, and I'm still in the game after all these years, but probably, the, you know, the structures and the and and the disciplines of sports broadcasting started during that time as a young man uh, calling with some very esteemed broadcasters in Australia was just brilliant and you've called FIFA World Cup finals horse racing athletics a a lot of different stuff like master of um, a lot and no no jack of all trades and master of none is that what they say but it's a little bit like that but I do love as you know, because we worked together at ESPN Star in the old days, I love my football. I've, you know, you don't go to World Cups without it infusing you completely, and that's what's it's happened to me. And but you know, I've done different stuff like World Athletics Championships, Tour de France, on site, um, multiple Olympic Games. So, and Grand Slam tennis has been great too. It's just everything I've experienced has been a, a real privilege. One of the biggest buzzes I've ever got is. Um doing a Southampton match, being a very yeah. proud Southampton fan. You must have had the same, presumably, when you did the um, Asian Cup final with Australia? Well, I didn't call that, Andy, because the uh, Fox had the rights to that. I'm with SBS, and we've got the World Cup rights. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but ironically, we might have shipped um, nine goals and lost three matches at the 2014 World Cup, but the way the soccer is played against Chile, Netherlands and Spain was inspiring, albeit we lost three matches. Just, uh, you know, we've had, a, we had a, a couple of Dutch coaches that played a dour style of football and then we had a, an Aussie coach who was largely untested, well, was untested at that level, who appealed to the ambition of his, his young players. And, you know, we pushed Chile, we should have drawn against the Dutch and we ran out of steam against Spain, but it was a great journey. Have you got any tips for any aspiring commentators? Um, just to research as much as you can, but once you've done that and you're in the moment, let your instincts take over. So, yeah, have a structure to your broadcast and, and really allow yourself to feel what your audience is looking for, but just let it go. Get your emotion as much as anything to tell the story. And you'll probably use about 1% of all, that, all of that research, <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any great calls? That you stick in my stick in your mind. Great well, moments. Well, when Tim Cahill scored the overhead goal uh, at the World Cup 2014 against the Dutch, that was something absolutely special. Less than 60 seconds after Ian Robin scored at the other end. Go on. What did, what did, how, did no, you, what, how did you call that, Dave? <laughs> Andy, you know what? <laughs> I know you you love the instant replay, but I'm not going to do it. I, I, I think it was 
it's probably on YouTube somewhere. I, I, I've never searched it, but it was just one of those moments where you were in the moment. That's all I can say. And and you, you felt the absolute, yeah, you felt the reverberation of of him as a player and the way it felt for the fans in the stadium. That's that's all I can explain about the emotions that I, I felt when I called that. What about, uh, how is it different calling a horse race or athletic race? I've really only had minor horse racing experience as a caller, but I remember calling um, uh, the uh, then clean but now disgraced Marion Jones when she got beaten for the first time in, f- I think, 42 races after the Sydney Olympics, 2001 World Athletics Championships. Another equally questionable athlete, Zana Pintusevic, block beat her in the 100-metre in the final. I've called um, Usain Bolt winning 100 and 200 metre championships at major level at the World Championships. So they've been, they've been really memorable commentaries because you're seeing the best of the best and you're seeing, in some cases, drama unfold in front of you. What was the Usain Bolt race? That was the Olympics in Beijing. So that was pretty special. Um, and presumably you get to travel the world as well. Not all the time. As you know, budgets are shrinking in football. So the old dreaded off-tube call is, is becoming more prevalent. So even for the A-League this season, I'm calling off-tube every Friday night from Sydney, but wherever the match is played in Australia. Um, but, you know, Champions League final at the Luzhniki Stadium in Moscow when, uh, um, you know, Man United beat Chelsea and John Terry missed the penalty. That was pretty special. Liverpool the year before when AC Milan beat them so yeah it was those sort of moments you never forget and Spain lifting its their first World Cup in 2010 was pretty special as well. What was Brazil like? It, it was just incredible more so as an observation of a country that loved their football but you just knew that the people could a, the average Brazilian couldn't afford to go to Estadia and really there was ultra corruption in getting the World Cup to Brazil. Uh, extra stadia built, a lot of corruption within the organising committee and in some ways the favelas are the heartbeat of their consciousness and they felt they would watch football night and day but uh, they had a uneasy feeling about that World Cup. Mm, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you must have met some really famous people. Yeah, I have over the years. Like, you, you tend to, I don't know, you tend to not hold them on a pedestal as, as, as a working commentator, journalist, reporter, interviewer. I suppose Boris Becker, um, some of the great tennis players. I've had a sit down with Roger Federer for, for 10 minutes. Um, I even, would you believe, uh, interviewed Alain Prost in the old days of Formula One and some of the Michael Schumacher when I, in my time at ESPN Star Sports. That was quite special. Um, you know, Usain Bolt, I think, was special because he never took himself seriously in the twice I've interviewed him and twice he was just refreshing. He loves his football, as you know. A uh, huge mountain of a man uh, with enormous potent, you know, a- athletic presence, I suppose. And he was just, um, he was brilliant to interview. Yeah, finally, if you were at an after-dinner speech and it was an evening with David uh, Bashir, what would be your, your anecdote, your go-to anecdote to entertain that room? Uh, you know, Andy, can I just say that when we were discussing our different styles, your style, your very individual style and mine, it was the analogy was that I hit straight down the line in between sort of mid-off and mid-on, and you love rocking on that back foot and hitting it through the square leg and uh, those square cover drives. So my anecdote would be let yourself go. If you're calling a sport you love, and you're doing a, an event from local football to a major international event. Feel the passion and broadcast from your heart. Thanks, Dave. Good on you, Penders. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Uh, top boy, Dave Bashir. Lo- lovely in- to interview him. And if you can draw some inspiration on his career and indeed the way that he commentates as well, because he does horse racing calls, athletics calls and football calls the best. I did li- uh, Last night, Nick, I was doing... Uh, what game did I do on Fox? Uh, was it the AFC or under yeah, 23? Um, very one side of the fair. The Chinese took the lead, courtesy of a Liao amazing free kick before. So I can't even think of they're playing. <laughs> Who were they playing to begin with? Who were China? Syria. Playing? Syria. Before Syria, looking really strong as well. Some quality players. 
Um, picked up, just just won three one after China got reduced to ten men. Hey, really good tournament that. If you get a chance and want to see some top top class Asian football, then get in, get involved on Fox Sports because that AFC Under Twenty Three Championship doubles up this year as a qualifier for Rio. 2016, the top three teams go and visit there. Big show for you tomorrow as well. Uh, we're hoping to have Claire Jedrick on the show, uh, racing driver and just superstar. Um, also on the show, uh, who else have we got on the show, Nick? Well, a very literally massive guest, uh, Daniel Noble. He, if, if you've read the news, he's the power lifter, Singaporean power lifter. He's a Kiwi, and but he's got Singaporean blood in him. And he's, and, he's, and he's winning things. He's not only winning things, world record. Right. Deadlift. World record holder on the show tomorrow. Also coming up? Uh, Cezali from the New Papers on. Yeah, well. I'm going to get stuck into him about what's happening with their local football. I think he'll give us a real good feel from the New Papers perspective. And a former home United player, Sofian Hamid, he, he scored in a cup final once. He's going to tell us all about that goal. Yeah, awesome. Looking forward to that. Thanks for coming tonight, everyone. A bit of a weird show tonight, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of phone calls, uh, a missed, uh, <laughs> missed guest a missed guest who was supposed to be in but did not come, but yeah. we still managed to do something with him anyway. And we managed to get all, the, all of our voiceovers over, done for, uh, for the year. 2016. Yeah, yeah. Especially that uh, Dom, Dom was good fun. Uh, yeah, so thanks for your company. We'll see you again tomorrow. It's a red card. And he should get two red cards. That's got the red card.